Welcome back. Nice to see you again. And as we come to the real grass field here, which is Sun Devil Stadium, home of the Arizona State University of Sun Devils in Tempe, Arizona. It is also where the Arizona Cardinals will play. And in future times, maybe next year, whenever they can get it done, there will be a new stadium at Glendale. Here's your kickoff. Seavers hitting it. Maurice Hall and Chris Gamble waiting. And it goes deep into the end zone and will come out to the 20-yard line where the white-shirted Ohio State Buckeyes will have it. Buckeye quarterback Craig Krenzel is 14-1 as a starter, studying the heavy stuff that leads to medical school and doing it at an honors level. Big guy, 245 pounds, hard to rattle him. He just does what he needs to do to get the job done. He has successive wins over Michigan, and that alone will make him a Buckeye hero. Taking their time, coming out, doing everything deliberately. It's going to be interesting to see then if Miami, in fact, can be patient. We've got a penalty flag before the first snap. And Krenzel comes walking to the sidelines, looking at him. And they're going to get a five-yard penalty for having 12 men in the huddle. You talk about a bad omen for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Start the game off with the uh, ball in the 20. Then 12 men in the huddle will set them back all the way to the 15-yard line. Well, the omen that bothered me more than anything else is the drum major dropped the baton when they first came on the field with the band. <laughs> a lot of pressure in big games for everybody, Keith. <laughs> From the 15-yard line, here's your first snap of the ball game. Krenzel turn, gives to Tourette, behind the line of scrimmage, stop cold at the 13-yard line. The Tostito starting lineup, backs and receivers, running back Maurice Claret, true freshman, ran for 1,190 yards. Split in Michael Jenkins, has been a big play man all season, the offensive front. Now here you find some trees. Tackle to tackle, they go 305, 355, 310, 312, 310, all of them juniors. Rob Sims, a good start ahead, and we'll play some ahead of Ivan Douglas, the regular tonight at offensive tackle. Claret, Maurice, a pair of them. Claret and Hall in the backfield for the Buckeyes. Crimson looking to throw, throws it down and takes off. He hits the 20, goes to the 24-yard line before he is brought down by Sean Taylor. The defense along the front, Miami, not as big as some, but so quick, hard to sustain your blocks on them. They don't look for a draw. The down linemen look for a body. Linebackers, Jonathan Vilma, leader of the group, 119 tackles. DJ Williams, 100. The defensive secondary has stepped up. No seniors here. One, uh, one guy will catch your eye. That's that big free safety, Sean Taylor, at 6'3", 220. These people like to leave their fingerprints on you. It is third down and six. Frenzel with good protection. Very good. Can't find anybody to throw to. Running out of time. Gets it away down the sideline. In the Great That's a coverage uh, play there because there was no white shirt available. Well, and Craig Krenzel's been sacked 31 times this season. His offensive line did a nice job, but that's what he's going to face tonight is outstanding speed in the secondary of the Hurricanes. We saw on his first pass attempt, he could barely get back to the pocket. All right, Buckeye faithful, hold your breath. Here's the punt. Newton hits it. Uh, Andy Groom hits it. And it is Roscoe Parrish on a brilliant kick. Cannot get to it. It is Parrish lingering back there in the shadows of the evening, and he is terrifying once he gets a little open field. But away he went, and he couldn't get to the ball. Ken Dorsey, the quarterback for Miami, transcends in his record any I've ever seen, 38-1. and one. Are you kidding? And he is just short of his second academic degree. His seasonal numbers dominated the Big East. On the field, he is the cool dude who drives this bus. And don't be surprised if the cool dude doesn't go downtown early in this ballgame. They want to set Miami style of football against this Buckeye defense. Andy Groom's punt was a 56 yarder, and the Hurricanes start at the 20. Back quickly goes Dorsey. Down he goes Dorsey. Knocked off balance behind the line of scrimmage by Big Will Smith. 
And so there's a loss on the first play offensively for Miami. Will Smith is a stand-up defensive end at times. And with his ability, number 93 will come from the left side of the screen. And he gets to Dorsey in a hurry and knocks him down with one hand. Ball is on the 17-yard line now for the Kings. On second down and 13, give it to McGahey. And McGahey gets to the 15-yard line. He runs into big old Matt Wilhelm, and down he goes. Another loss. The Tostino starting lineup for the Miami backs and receivers. They are at the fore of this wave of speed the Canes offer. 212-pound Andre Johnson wide receiver may be the fastest on the field. The offensive front, there are three 300s here. Right tackle Vernon Carey the largest. He's at 340 or so, down from 375. And a Canadian, Brett Romberg at center, anchors the line. That was only the ninth sack of the season against Ken Dorsey. Three wide receivers now for the Kings as Dorsey goes to the shotgun and now coming back toward the, the line of scrimmage is Roscoe Paris and a whistle before the ball was snapped. Dorsey calling for a timeout. He was looking at the defensive alignment and looking at the play that he had and didn't like what he had. So he said, let's talk about it. No score early on in the first quarter. Both teams having trouble getting cranked up offensively. And here's our PlayStation 2 team comparison. Miami, this is where it's going to be decided. Miami scores a lot of points. The Buckeyes don't give up a lot of points. But right down here, they are very poor at defending the pass. Great start in sacking Dorsey on first down. And it's third down and 15. The ball is on the 15-yard line. The wideouts are Andre Johnson, Ethnic Sands, and Moscow Paris. Back goes Dorsey, getting one block to help him out, goes down the middle with it. The ball is caught by Johnson. Johnson is a big man at 212 pounds, and he picks up a first down at the 35-yard line. Not only is he a big man, Keith, he is powerful and almost impossible to keep at the line of scrimmage with a bump. Chris Gamble, number seven, trying to stop Johnson as they go to a double team there with Donnie Nicky, number 25, too late to close on this perfectly timed crossing route from Dorsey to Johnson. Shea Grant has left the field now for Ohio State, shaken up. He's a very important member of that uh, Ohio State defense. A.J. Hawk replaces him down the sidelines. The pass is too long and into the crowd, incomplete, intended for ethnic sands and defended by Donnie Nicky. Let's have a look now at the Ohio State defense along the front. The tackles, Tim Anderson, Kenny Peterson, the tough guys. They don't understand giving up anything. The linebackers made most of the tackles this year. 6-5, Matt Wilhelm in the middle, leading the team with 111. He's already has one tonight. And the DBs, strong safety, Michael Doss, consensus All-American. That means everybody voted for him. And Chris Gamble plays both ways, offense, defense, special teams. In the last three games, each he had over 100 plays. Try that sometime. That'll take care of you, this time. Ball is handed off on a delay to McGay. McGay, he goes to the 40. And that'll do it. Picked up five yards. Keith, the injury to C. Grant uh, could be critical for the Buckeyes. This is a former cornerback who's bulked up and moved to linebacker. But the Buckeyes like his ability to uh, take Kellen Winslow Jr. man for man. Now, if C. Grant cannot play the rest of the evening, that's a huge advantage for the Hurricanes. It is third down and five. The ball is on the 40-yard line, and Dorsey goes back on the center. The pass is thrown to the right side. The pass is completed for the first down to Andre Johnson. He picks up another five yards to go with it. Chris Kimball, Gamble at 180 pounds, 6'2", wrestling with a man who is 6'3 and 212. Here's the story now on C. Grant from Todd Harris. Keith, I talked with Dr. John Lombardo of Ohio State. He said it's just a bruised rib. There's no way Seagrant's not going to play. He will be back in the game. Thank you. A.J. Hawk remains in the ball game in replacement of him. 6'2", 230, freshman from Centerville, Ohio. And uh, a freshman in these circumstances is in deep order. The ball is on the 49-yard line for the first time tonight. My team is on the other side of the field. Dorsey is caught behind the line of scrimmage. All the way back at the 45-yard line by Kenny Peterson. One of those big tackles we were talking about. Number 97. 
Peterson picks up his fifth pack on the season. And again, now Dorsey, remember, only eight times all season has he gone down. Already twice here in the first quarter, the Buckeye defense and their defensive line, which is most important, if they can get pressure on Dorsey with just three or four defensive linemen, they can play all types of different zone coverages behind them. Second down and 15. Jason Gebbers comes into the ball game as a wide out goes to the top of the screen. That's Roscoe Parrish in motion coming back toward the ball. And Dorsey turns around, sets up the throw, goes quickly. The ball is caught. And wham! Parrish takes a lick from Gambo. Chris came across like a runaway truck and took him down for a loss back to midfield. Keith Chris Gamble is not only a two-way player, he's a three-way player. As a wide receiver, amazingly, his 29 catches, none went for a touchdown. But as a defensive back, four interceptions, and one did go for a touchdown against Penn State. But he will also see double duty as a three-way player, returning kickoffs and punts. Busy night tonight for Chris Gamble. And good news to the Buckeyes. See Grant is back in the ball game. Dorsey comes short to the sidelines. The ball's home a long way to the sidelines. It's completed to Kevin Winslow. And in the melee, Winslow will fight his way down to about the 44-yard line. Keith, that shows you how important that sack by Kenny Peterson was. That forced the uh, Dol the <laughs> Hurricanes into a passing situation. A lot of good time to throw. Only a three-man rush for Ohio State. That forced Dorsey against his own coverage to go to his outlet receiver. Smart play, good defense by the Buckeyes. All right, here's the punt by Freddie Capshaw, who got to Miami from Rock Springs, Wyoming. It's going downfield, down to the goal line. Ball rolls around, Canes try to kill it, and it looks like they did just short of the goal line. And Antoine Roll came down and threw his body on it and pinned Ohio State right against their own goal line. So a great play by Roll. Still no score, and the Buckeyes are back up. The Ohio State Buckeyes possess the ball at their own one-yard line. In fact, it's inside for one. So if there was ever a time to be careful, I think this is it. Keith, they've got a quarterback sneak. They cannot afford against the quickness of this Miami defensive line to take the ball away from center. And there's a huge hole over there. There's a big hole right at center. He doesn't go up that hole. He slides off to the right side. <laughs> it's a big gap right in front of the center. You know what he did is he hesitated, Keith. Instead of just taking it and going behind his center, Stepanovich, look at the hole right there. Just go right now. Don't hesitate. But he decides to step back get behind the triple team there, which is not a bad idea. But I think he could have got a couple more yards if he'd gone straight ahead. Of course, uh, you've got to remember, folks, he stepped up here 300 feet away from <laughs> where the fight's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Four yard line. Second down and seven. Florette's going to get it. Bouncing to the outside. Looks for nothing and uh, finds nothing. There just wasn't any room. The cane shoved the door closed in a hurry. Okay, this is where Craig Kensel is going to have to be very careful with the ball on this third down. Watch for the tight end. Ben Hartsock. Third down and three. I'll put it up. There it goes, and it is incomplete. It was intended for the red. He's making his case. He gets no answer. DJ Williams defended on the play, and uh, I don't know where there was another man available to uh, Craig Crinson. I didn't see one. There's DJ right there, strictly man-to-man -man coverage. That's a good route by Claret, but a better route by a former running back, D.J. Williams of De La Salle High School in California. Yeah, that's that team up from Cardinford area that's always undefeated. Here's a beautiful punt coming out of the end zone by Groom, and he will kill the ball at the 48-yard line on the Miami side of the field as Roscoe Parrish makes a fair catch. There is no score. The temperature when we started the ball game tonight was just under 70 degrees. It's been a very warm day today, and it's headed for the 80s by the weekend, they say. So that cold snap that was here when the teams arrived to start their final training has gone away, and you've got warm, soft days. 
Here come the Canes now. First down from their own 48-yard line. McGay looking for daylight, can't find any. Mike Doss, who was a consensus All-American strong safety this year. He thought about going to Sunday play, but came back instead, and he was has been an inspiration and a great persona in the Buckeyes' success this year. He's going to be a busy man tonight, too, Keith. He's going to be lined up against Kellen Winslow Jr. a lot of the evening, but also the run forces. We saw him that time. He is as quick as anybody at recognizing run and coming up and making a sure tackle. You got double wide, wide receivers to the top of the screen, and you move Eric Winston, a tight end, in there at that blocking back position. And Dorsey going back to set up the throw, goes down the middle with it, the pass caught by Winslow, and he's all the way down inside the 25-yard line. He's a tight end and a wide receiver body, and he's got almost sprinter speed. C. Grant made the tackle. And the one thing Ohio State wants to do is make Dorsey move around, make him come to his secondary receiver. He moves this time, and he finds a wide-open tight end in Winslow as his secondary receiver. And Winslow, 81, bottom of the screen, runs like a wide receiver. He's six foot five, 235 pounds, and he is a special player. All of that weight and speed slamming down gives you an idea of how good the turf is here. It's very good. So on first down, they go back to McGay. He's pinned behind the line of scrimmage. Down at the 25-yard line, a loss of two, and it's Kenny Peterson who gets there first for the Buckeyes. Big tackle. Keith, one of the things the Buckeyes are able to do so far is with their defensive line, they run a an under type of defense, which is something that the uh, Canes have not seen a whole lot. Here's Will Smith, number 93, playing pass defense, number nine against Kellen Winslow, getting into a little fight there. That should have been called. Yeah, I agree with you, Kellen. Can't take a swipe at a guy like that, but this defense forcing McGahee to cut back to the middle. Miami spends a timeout. They have one remaining here in the first half of play, and we're still in the first quarter. And so the Hurricanes down in a position to perhaps score. Want to make sure they don't make a mistake. Kellen Winslow Sr. is in the crowd tonight. Old teammate of Dan Fouts watching his son just come up with a big play. at second down and 12 now for the Hurricanes back at the 25. Dorsey looking for somebody. Goes down to the corner and goes out of bounds. The pass is incomplete. The pass uh, forced by Tim Anderson who was getting in Ken Dorsey's face. And he tried to get it to Johnson but he threw it out of bounds. Now, a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith and Dan, the reason for the timeout for the Miami Hurricanes is that the coaching staff was having problems with their headset. They couldn't get a play from upstairs called in. They didn't communicate to the quarterback. Time ran out. He called it. They walked over and talked to the coaches of Ohio State, but the problem has been fixed. Well, that's a good, cool-headed senior quarterback for you. Didn't waste the play or waste the position. Andre Johnson, keep your eye on number five. Dorsey going back. Blitz up the middle, steps away from it. Ball's in the air. Pass is caught. It's touchdown, Miami. Roscoe Parrish. Okay, this is why Ken Dorsey has won 38 games out of 39 tries as a starter for the Canes. He manages the game well. Knew he had to call, use his timeouts, been under pressure, been able to sidestep it, and that was a marvelous play. Todd Sievers for the point. It's good. Once Roscoe Parrish gets you on his hip, you are not going to catch him. Unless you're a thoroughbred. Keith Dorsey, six out of eight now for 94 yards. He's been knocked down a couple of times, sacked twice, but watch him move in the pocket. As he goes back, he gets pressure right up the middle, but keeps his focus down the field as Roscoe Parrish beats none other than the three-time All-American Michael Dawes. Watch the route. 
just a pure speed route, Keith. Just like you said, if he gets behind you, he's gone. And that's where he is, all the way to the end zone. Donnie Nicky was the blitzer coming out of the secondary, a safety blitz for Ohio State. But he was picked off at the line of scrimmage just enough to give Dorsey that one step. Great teamwork by that offense. The back coming up to pick up the blitzing safety. And if you don't get to the quarterback when you blitz your safeties, you are going to get beat. Maurice Hall. Chris Gamble. And here's Todd Seavers kicking off. This one might not be good. Yeah, coming with it. And uh, they get it to the 15-yard line, and that's all. So the Buckeyes again pinned back in their own territory. Maurice Claret and Maurice Hall will set up in the backfield in a split back position. Claret might move up into a slot. From the 15, first down, Miami leading 7 to nothing. And Penzel rolls to the right. Looking for help. Gets it all dead downfield. Fight the position and it is intercepted on the rebound by Sean Taylor. Chris Vance. Downfield under the ball, two defenders against him. It bounced off one and into the arms of Taylor. Gretzel wanted to go to his big play receiver, Michael Jenkins, but Jenkins was totally shut out. Watch as he rolls out to the right after the fake. To the outside there, you see Jenkins is double teamed. Then the pressure by Antrell Roll and the big hit by Andrew Williams. That makes this ball flutter. Jennings is back there fighting with Chris Vance, and that's an outstanding play by Sean Taylor. His third interception of the year, and what an athletic move to pick up the deflection. And he's only a sophomore and still growing at 6'3", what, 220? Dorsey back. Wants to go for the jumper right here. He goes to Johnson, and Johnson is up close to midfield. This is a trademark of Miami's quick strike offense. It averaged a little less than two minutes in their possessions that resulted in scores. And they're not worried about uh, whether they can run the ball or not, Keith. They've rushed for a minus six yards because of those two sacks on Dorsey, but Dorsey says, what the heck, let's throw it every down. Three and a half minutes roughly remaining in the first quarter of play. Miami 7 to nothing. Their first down at their own 49 yard line. Dorsey turns and gives to the day. And again, they take him down short of the line of scrimmage. It's Matt Wilhelm with his second tackle for a loss. The big guys up front really free up. Matt Wilhelm, Tim Anderson, and Kenny Peterson, along with David Thompson at times. They allow Wilhelm, you can see, 111 tackles. That will get you a first-team AP All-American every time, but it's because of the coordination of those big guys up front that allows him to roam free. And you got that many stars on your hat. You're pretty good. <laughs> Second down and 12. Dorsey hands to McGay. Again, he can't find any running room. Number 54, Tim Anderson grabs him and takes him down in a hurry. Takes him down in a hurry and takes him down for another loss. Ball will go back to the 45-yard line, where it'll be third down and 14. Okay, six rushes so far, minus one yard. Four of his rushes have resulted in losses. Now they go to three wideouts. Out of the shotgun, Dorsey with time. Go shopping and throws complete to the 45-yard line on the Buckeye side of the field, left McSands, but that is short of the first down. Well, it appear that Craig Krenzel's sixth interception of the year will not hurt the Buckeyes as their defense comes up with a strong effort against the run. That forced up another long passing situation. Soft zone defense for the Buckeyes and another punt for Miami. Freddie Capshaw is back to punt, and Chris Gamble is waiting for it back at the 10-yard line. And a low kick that will not be returned. It will go into the end zone. Jim Trussell talking about his quarterback in our interviews this week had this comment on the value of Craig Trussell. The winners of big games have quarterbacks who 
uh, you know, didn't make a whole bunch of mistakes. You know, they might make some because they're going to make big plays. And I don't mean that he's just got to stand there and hold on to the ball and, and not make any plays, but he's got to have the right balance between being a playmaker and making sure we take good care of the ball. The other thing Craig Krenzel has to do is he's got to find a way of throwing a ball to his teammate. He hadn't had many people to throw to so oh. far. Had one good run himself. So Krenzel hunkers down at first down on the 20 yard line. And here come the Buckeyes with the possession. And they get a, a long start move on the right side of the line with the tight end Ryan Hemby. Hemby is a youngster. He's just a freshman out of Cincinnati and they think he's going to be a good one. Now field position has been horrible for the Buckeyes tonight. Uh, they've got their footprints all over that 15-yard line, and that's where they're going to be after this five-yard penalty. Well, they're four possessions here in the first quarter, and they're averaging starting on their own 14-yard line. That won't get it done. For the first time, Chris Campbell comes into the ball game as an offensive player. Campbell has been on defense solely up to now, but he will give uh, Craig Krenzel another option as a pass receiver. He's quite good. On the far side, top of your screen. Prince goes into the shotgun, pulls it down, and takes off. Looks like single wing football. Easy. And you get it out to the 20 yard line, and we spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, the goal for the Ohio State Buckeye team was to take Chris Gamble with 40 days off and have him focus on the defense, and that's exactly what he did. Spent most of his time in the defensive secondary because there's a higher premium on his ability to stop a top receiver like Andre Johnson than it is coming in on offense. Couple that with the fact that the defense has been on the field constantly in this ball game for Ohio State. Then he's more tired. You're not going to use him that much on offense. He's just got a handful of plays on offense they want to use him for in this ball game. Okay, 20 second down and 10. The ball is out at the 20, and uh, Gamble's out of there as we get Hamby back into the game. Good play action, and Krenzel's pass is right on the hands of Michael Jenkins. And Michael Jenkins will pick up a first down for the Ohio State Buckeyes. This combination of Krenzel and Jenkins won some ball games in the late going this season for the Bucks. And Craig Krenzel shows uh, great patience in the pocket. Jenkins is number 12 after the fake to Claret. Watch how long that Krenzel holds that ball before taking that lick and delivering a perfect ball for Jenkins. Right out in front, doesn't have to break stride. Those big hands suck it right in. And that is Ohio State's first, first down of the ball game. And it comes with 28 seconds to play, 26 and 25 counting in the first quarter. Chris Gamble is back in. Claret to the outside. Kane struck him down and get him right about the line of scrimmage as Roger McIntosh was over there to greet him. Well, and I'm not so sure that Claret uh, wasn't supposed to give the ball to Gamble on the reverse. They had blockers out in front, but he decided to hang on to it and paid for it. And so we finish the first quarter of play. It's Miami 7. And the Ohio State Buckeyes nothing. Welcome back. Nice to see you again. And as we come to the real grass field here, which is Sun Devil Stadium, home of the Arizona State University Sun Devils in Tempe, Arizona. It is also where the Arizona Cardinals will play. And in future times, maybe next year, whenever they can get it done, there will be a new stadium at Glendale. Here's your kickoff. Seavers hitting it. Maurice Hall and Chris Gamble waiting. And it goes deep into the end zone and will come out to the 20-yard line where the white-shirted Ohio State Buckeyes will have it. Buckeye quarterback Craig Krenzel is 14-1 as a starter, studying the heavy stuff that leads to medical school and doing it at an honors level. Big guy, 245 pounds, hard to rattle him. He just does what he needs to do to get the job done. He has successive wins over Michigan, and that alone will make him a Buckeye hero. Taking their time, coming out, doing everything deliberately. It's going to be interesting to see then if Miami, in fact, can be patient. We've got a penalty play before the first snap. 
And Krenzel comes walking to the sidelines, looking at him. And they're going to get a five-yard penalty for having 12 men in the huddle. You talk about a bad omen for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Start the game off with the uh, ball in the 20, then 12 men in the huddle will set them back all the way to the 15-yard line. Well, the omen that bothered me more than anything else is the drum major dropped the baton when they first came on the field with the band. A lot of pressure in big games for everybody, Keith. <laughs> From the 15-yard line, here's your first snap of the ball game. Krenzel turns, gives to Tourette, behind the line of scrimmage, stop cold at the 13-yard line. The Tostito starting lineup, backs and receivers, running back Maurice Claret, true freshman, ran for 1,190 yards. Split in Michael Jenkins, has been a big play man all season, the offensive front. Now here you find some trees. Tackle to tackle, they go 305, 355, 310, 312, 310, all of them juniors. Rob Sims, uh, good start ahead, uh, and we'll play some ahead of Ivan Douglas, the regular tonight at offensive tackle. Claret, Maurice, a pair of them. Claret and Hall in the backfield for the Buckeyes. Crimson looking to throw, throws it down and takes off. He hits the 20, goes to the 24-yard line before he is brought down by Sean Taylor. The defense along the front, Miami, not as big as some, but so quick, hard to sustain your blocks on them. They don't look for a draw. The down linemen look for a buddy. Linebackers, Jonathan Vilma, leader of the group, 119 tackles. DJ Williams, 100. The defensive secondary has stepped up. No seniors here. One, eye, one guy will catch your eye. That's that big free safety, Sean Taylor, at 6'3", 220. These people like to leave their fingerprints on you. It is third down and six. Krenzel with good protection. Very good. Can't find anybody to throw to. Running out of time. Gets it away down the sideline. In the Great That's a coverage uh, play there because there was no white shirt available. Well, and Craig Krenzel's been sacked 31 times this season. His offensive line did a nice job, but that's what he's going to face tonight is outstanding speed in the secondary of the Hurricanes. We saw on his first pass attempt, he could barely get back to the pocket. All right, Buckeye faithful, hold your breath. Here's the punt. Newton hits it. Uh, Andy Groom hits it. And it is Roscoe Parrish on a brilliant kick. Cannot get to it. It is Parrish lingering back there in the shadows of the evening, and he is terrifying once he gets a little open field. But away he went, and he couldn't get to the ball. Ken Dorsey, the quarterback for Miami, transcends in his record any I've ever seen, 38-1. and one. Are you kidding? And he is just short of his second academic degree. His seasonal numbers dominated the Big East. On the field, he is the cool dude who drives this bus. And don't be surprised if the cool dude doesn't go downtown early in this ballgame. They want to set Miami style of football against this Buckeye defense. Andy Groom's punt was a 56 yarder, and the Hurricanes start at the 20. Back quickly goes Dorsey. Down he goes Dorsey. Knocked off balance behind the line of scrimmage by Big Will Smith. And so there's a loss on the first play offensively for Miami. Will Smith is a stand-up defensive end at times. And with his ability, number 93 will come from the left side of the screen. And he gets to Dorsey in a hurry and knocks him down with one hand. Ball is on the 17-yard line now for the Canes. On second down and 13, give it to McGahey. And McGahey gets to the 15-yard line. He runs into big old Matt Wilhelm and down he goes. Another loss. The Tostino starting lineup for the Miami Maxson receivers. They are at the fore of this wave of speed the Canes offer. 212-pound Andre Johnson wide receiver may be the fastest on the field. The offensive front, there are three 300s here. Right tackle Vernon Carey the largest. He's at 340 or so, down from 375. And a Canadian, Brett Romberg at center, anchors the line. That was only the ninth sack of the season against Ken Dorsey. Three wide receivers now for the Canes as Dorsey goes to the shotgun and now coming back toward the, the line of scrimmage of Roscoe Parrish and a whistle before the ball was snapped. 
Dorsey calling for a timeout. He was looking at the defensive alignment and looking at the play that he had and didn't like what he had. So he said, let's talk about it. No score early on in the first quarter. Both teams having trouble getting cranked up offensively. And here's our PlayStation 2 team comparison. Miami, this is where it's going to be decided. Miami scores a lot of points. The Buckeyes don't give up a lot of points. But right down here, they are very poor at defending the pass. Great start in sacking Dorsey on first down. And it's third down and 15. The ball is on the 15-yard line. The wideouts are Andre Johnson, F. Nick Sands, and Moscow Paris. Back goes Dorsey, getting one block to help him out, goes down the middle with it. The ball is caught by Johnson. Johnson is a big man at 212 pounds, and he picks up a first down at the 35-yard line. Not only is he a big man, Keith, he is powerful and almost impossible to keep at the line of scrimmage with a bump. Chris Gamble, number seven, trying to stop Johnson as they go to a double team there with Donnie Nicky, number 25, too late to close on this perfectly timed crossing route from Dorsey to Johnson. Shea Grant has left the field now for Ohio State, shaken up. He's a very important member of that uh, Ohio State defense. A.J. Hawk replaces him down the sidelines. The pass is too long and into the crowd, incomplete, intended for ethnic Sands and defended by Donnie Nicky. Let's have a look now at the Ohio State defense along the front. The tackles, Tim Anderson, Kenny Peterson, the tough guys. They don't understand giving up anything. The linebackers made most of the tackles this year. 6'5", Matt Wilhelm in the middle, leading the team with 111. He's already has one tonight. And the DBs, strong safety, Michael Doss, consensus All-American. That means everybody voted for him. And Chris Gamble plays both ways, offense, defense, special teams. In the last three games, each he had over 100 plays. Try that sometime. That'll take care of you, this time. Ball is handed off on a delay to McGay. McGay, he goes to the 40. And that'll do it. Picked up five yards. Keith, the injury to C. Grant uh, could be critical for the Buckeyes. This is a former cornerback who's bulked up and moved to linebacker, but the Buckeyes like his ability to uh, take Kellen Winslow Jr. man for man. Now, if C. Grant cannot play the rest of the evening, that's a huge advantage for the Hurricanes. It is third down and five. The ball is on the 40-yard line, and the Dorsey goes back under center. The pass is thrown to the right side. The pass is completed for the first down to Andre Johnson. He gets up another five yards to go with it. Chris Campbell, Gamble at 180 pounds, 6'2", wrestling with a man who is 6'3 and 2'12". Here's the story now on C. Grant from Todd Harris. Keith, I talked with Dr. John Lombardo of Ohio State. He said it's just a bruised rib. There's no way C. Grant's not going to play. He will be back in the game. Thank you. A.J. Hawk remains in the ball game in replacement of him. 6'2", 230, freshman from Centerville, Ohio. And uh, a freshman in these circumstances is in deep order. The ball is on the 49-yard line for the first time tonight. Our uh, team is on the other side of the field. Dorsey is caught behind the line of scrimmage. All the way back at the 45-yard line by Kenny Peterson. One of those big tackles we were talking about. Number 97. Peterson picks up his fifth tack on the season. And again, now Dorsey, remember, only eight times all season has he gone down. Already twice here in the first quarter, the Buckeye defense and their defensive line, which is most important, if they can get pressure on Dorsey with just three or four defensive linemen, they can play all types of different zone coverages behind that. Second down and 15. Jason Gethers comes into the ball game as a wide out goes to the top of the screen. That's Roscoe Parrish in motion coming back toward the ball. And Dorsey turns around, sets up the throw, goes quickly. The ball is caught. And wham! Parrish takes a lick from Gambo. Chris came across like a runaway truck and took him down for a loss back to midfield. Keith Chris Gamble is not only a two-way player, he's a three-way player. As a wide receiver, amazingly, his 29 catches, none went for a touchdown. But as a defensive back, four interceptions, and one did go for a touchdown against Penn State. But he will also see double duty as a three-way player returning kickoffs and punts. 
Busy night tonight for Chris Gamble. And good news for the Buckeyes. C. Grant is back in the ball game. Dorsey comes short to the sidelines. The ball's thrown a long way to the sidelines. It's completed to Kevin Winslow. And in the melee, Winslow will fight his way down to about the 44-yard line. Keith, that shows you how important that sack by Kenny Peterson was. That forced the adult, the <laughs> Hurricanes into a passing situation. A lot of good time to throw. Only a three-man rush for Ohio State. That forced Dorsey against his own coverage to go to his outlet receiver. Smart play, good defense by the Buckeyes. All right, here's the punt by Freddie Capshaw. who got to Miami from Rock Springs, Wyoming. It's going downfield, down to the goal line. Ball rolls around, Canes try to kill it, and it looks like they did just short of the goal line. And Antoine Rule came down and threw his body on it and pinned Ohio State right against their own goal line. So a great play by Rose, still no score, and the Buckeyes are back up. The Ohio State Buckeyes possess the ball at their own one yard line. In fact, it's inside for one. So if there was ever a time to be careful, I think this is it. Keith, they've got a quarterback sneak. They cannot afford to, against the quickness of this Miami defensive line to take the ball away from center. And there's a huge hole over there. There's a big hole right at center. He doesn't go up that hole. He slides <laughs> off to the right side. But there was a big gap right in front of the center. You know what he did is he hesitated, Keith. Instead of just taking it and going behind his center, Stepanovich, look at the hole right there. Just go right now. Don't hesitate. But he decides to step back get behind the triple team there, which is not a bad idea. But I think he could have got a couple more yards if he'd gone straight ahead. Of course, uh, We've got to remember, folks, he's stepped up here 300 feet away from where the fight's going on. <laughs> Absolutely. Four-yard line. Second down and seven. Florette's going to get it. Bouncing to the outside. Looks for nothing and uh, finds nothing. There just wasn't any room. The Canes shoved the door closed in a hurry. Keith, this is where Craig Kensel is going to have to be very careful with the ball on this third down. Watch for the tight end, Ben Hartsock. Third down and three. I'll put it up. There it goes, and it is incomplete. It is intended for the red. He's making his case. He gets no answer. D.J. Williams defended on the play, and uh, I don't know where there was another man available to... Uh, Craig Crinsell. I didn't see one. There's DJ right there. Strictly man-to-man -man coverage. That's a good route by Claret, but a better route by a former running back, DJ Williams of De La Salle High School in California. Yeah, that's that team up from Cornford area that's always undefeated. Here's a beautiful block coming out of the end zone by Groom, and he will kill the ball at the 48-yard line on the Miami side of the field as Roscoe Parrish makes a fair catch. There is no score. The temperature when we started the ball game tonight was just under 70 degrees. It's been a very warm day today, and it's headed for the 80s by the weekend, they say. So that cold snap that was here when the teams arrived to start their final training has gone away, and you've got warm, soft days. Here come the Canes now. First down from their own 48-yard line. McGay looking for daylight, can't find any. Mike Goss who was a consensus All-American strong safety this year. He thought about going to Sunday play, but came back instead, and he was has been an inspiration and a great persona in the Buckeyes' success this year. He's going to be a busy man tonight, too, Keith. He's got to be lined up against Kellen Winslow Jr. a lot of the evening, but also the run forces. We saw him that time. He is as quick as anybody at recognizing run and coming up and making a sure tackle. You got double wide wide receivers to the top of the screen, and you move Eric Winston, a tight end, in there at that blocking back. 
quarterback position. And Dorsey going back will set up the throw, goes down the middle with it, the pass caught by Winslow, and he's all the way down inside the 25-yard line. He's a tight end and a wide receiver body, and he's got almost sprinter speed. C. Grant made the tackle. And the one thing Ohio State wants to do is make Dorsey move around, make him come to his secondary receiver. He moves this time, and he finds a wide-open tight end in Winslow as his secondary receiver. And Winslow, 81, bottom of the screen, runs like a wide receiver. He's six foot five, 235 pounds, and he is a special player. All of that weight and speed slamming down gives you an idea of how good the turf is here. It's very good. So on first down, they go back to McGay. He's pinned behind the line of scrimmage. Out of the 25-yard line, a loss of two, and it's Kenny Peterson who gets there first for the Buckeyes. Big tackle. Keith, one of the things the Buckeyes are able to do so far is with their defensive line, they run a an under type of defense, which is something that the uh, Canes have not seen a whole lot. Here's Will Smith, number 93, playing pass defense, number nine against Kellen Winslow, getting into a little fight there. That should have been called. Yeah, I agree with you, Kellen. Can't take a swipe at a guy like that, but this defense forcing McGahey to cut back to the middle. Miami spends a timeout. They have one remaining here in the first half of play, and we're still in the first quarter. And so the Hurricanes down in a position to perhaps score. Want to make sure they don't make a mistake. Kellen Winslow Sr. is in the crowd tonight. Old teammate of Dan Fouts watching his son just come up with a big play. at second down and 12 now for the Hurricanes back at the 25. Dorsey looking for somebody. Goes down to the corner and goes out of bounds. The pass is incomplete. The pass uh, forced by Tim Anderson who was getting in Ken Dorsey's face. And he tried to get it to Johnson but he threw it out of bounds. Now, a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith and Dan, the reason for the timeout for the Miami Hurricanes is that the coaching staff was having problems with their headset. They couldn't get a play from upstairs called in. They didn't communicate to the quarterback. Time ran out. He called it. They walked over and talked to the coaches of Ohio State, but the problem has been fixed. Well, that's a good, cool-headed senior quarterback for you. Didn't waste the play or waste the position. Andre Johnson, keep your eye on number five. Dorsey going back. Blitz up the middle, steps away from it. Ball's in the air. Pass is caught. It's touchdown, Miami. Roscoe Parrish. Okay, this is why Ken Dorsey has won 38 games out of 39 tries as a starter for the Canes. He manages the game well. Knew he had to call, use his timeouts. Been under pressure, been able to sidestep it, and that was a marvelous play. Todd Sievers for the point. It's good. Once Moscow Parrish gets you on his hip, you are not going to catch it. Unless you're a thoroughbred. Keith Dorsey, six out of eight now for 94 yards. He's been knocked down a couple of times, sacked twice, but watch him move in the pocket. As he goes back, he gets pressure right up the middle, but keeps his focus down the field as Roscoe Parrish beats none other than the three-time All-American Michael Dawes. Watch the route. Just a pure speed route, Keith. Just like you said, if he gets behind you, he's gone, and that's where he is, all the way to the end zone. Donnie Nicky was the blitzer coming out of the secondary, a safety blitz for Ohio State, but he was picked off at the line of scrimmage just enough to give Dorsey that one step. Great teamwork by that offense. The back coming up to pick up the blitzing safety, and if you don't get to the quarterback when you blitz your safeties, you are going to get beat. Maurice Hall. Chris Gamble. And here's Todd Seavers kicking off. This one might not be good. They're coming with it. And uh, they get it to the 15-yard line, and that's all. 
So the Buckeyes again pinned back in their own territory. Maurice Claret and Maurice Hall will set up in the backfield in a split back position. Claret might move up into a slot. From the 15, first down, Miami leading 7 to nothing. And Pencil rolls to the right. Looking for help. Gets it all back downfield. Fight the position and it is intercepted on the rebound by Sean Taylor. Chris Vance downfield under the ball. Two defenders against him. It bounced off one and into the arms of Taylor. Gretzel wanted to go to his big play receiver, Michael Jenkins, but Jenkins was totally shut out. Watch as he rolls out to the right after the fake. To the outside there, you see Jenkins is double teamed. Then the pressure by Antrell Roll and the big hit by Andrew Williams. That makes this ball flutter. Jennings is back there fighting with Chris Vance, and that's an outstanding play by Sean Taylor. His third interception of the year, and what an athletic move to pick up the deflection. When he's only a sophomore and still growing. At 6 3, what, 220? Dorsey back. Wants to go for the jumper right here. He goes to Johnson, and Johnson is up close to midfield. This is a trademark of Miami's quick strike offense. They've averaged a little less than two minutes in their possessions that resulted in scores. And they're not worried about uh, whether they can run the ball or not, Keith. They've Rush for a minus six yards because of those two sacks on Dorsey, but Dorsey says, what the heck, let's throw it every down. Three and a half minutes roughly remaining in the first quarter of play. Miami seven to nothing, their first down at their own 49-yard line. Dorsey turns and gives to the day, and again they take him down short of the line of scrimmage. It's Matt Wilhelm with his second tackle for a loss. The big guys up front really free up. Matt Wilhelm, Tim Anderson, and Kenny Peterson, along with David Thompson at times. They allow Wilhelm, you can see, 111 tackles. That will get you a first-team AP All-American every time, but it's because of the coordination of those big guys up front that allows him to roam free. And you got that many stars on your hat. You're pretty good. <laughs> Second down and 12. Dorsey hands to McGay, and again, he can't find any running room. Number 54, Tim Anderson grabs him and takes him down in a hurry. Takes him down in a hurry and takes him down for another loss. Ball will go back to the 45-yard line, where it'll be third down and 14. McGay, six rushes so far, minus one yard. Four of his rushes have resulted in losses. Now they go to three wideouts. Out of the shotgun, Dorsey with time. Goes shopping and throws complete to the 45-yard line on the Buckeye side of the field. Left McSands, but that is short of the first down. Well, it appear that Craig Krenzel's sixth interception of the year will not hurt the Buckeyes as their defense comes up with a strong effort against the run that forced up another long passing situation soft zone defense for the Buckeyes and another punt for Miami Freddie Capshaw is back to punt and Chris Gamble is waiting for it back at the 10 yard line and a low kick that will not be returned it will go into the end zone Jim Trussell talking about his quarterback in our interviews this week had this comment on the value of Craig Trussell. Trent. The winners of big games have quarterbacks who, uh, you know, didn't make a whole bunch of mistakes. You know, they might make some because they're going to make big plays. And I don't mean that he's just got to stand there and hold on to the ball and, and not make any plays, but he's got to have the right balance between being a playmaker and making sure we take good care of the ball. Another thing Craig Krenzel has to do is he can kind of find a way of throwing a ball to his teammate. He hadn't had many people to throw to so oh. far. Had one good run himself. So Krenzel hunkers down at first down on the 20-yard line. And here come the Buckeyes for the possession. And they get a, a ball start move on the right side of the line by the tight end, Ryan Hemby. Hemby is a youngster. He's just a freshman out of Cincinnati, and they think he's going to be a good one. Now, field position has been horrible for the Buckeyes tonight. Uh, they've got their footprints all over that 15-yard line, and that's where they're going to be after this five-yard penalty. Well, there are four possessions here in the first quarter. 
And they're averaging starting on their own 14-yard line. That won't get it done. For the first time, Chris Campbell comes into the ball game as an offensive player. Campbell has been on defense solely up to now. But he will give uh, Craig Krenzel another option as a pass receiver. And he's quite good. He's on the far side, top of your screen. Krenzel goes into the shotgun, pulls it down, and takes off. It's like single wing Easy. football. Easy. And you get it out to the 20-yard line, and we spend a moment with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, the goal for the Ohio State Buckeye team was to take Chris Gamble with 40 days off and have him focus on the defense, and that's exactly what he did. Spent most of his time in the defensive secondary because there's a higher premium on his ability to stop a top receiver like Andre Johnson than it is coming in on offense. Couple that with the fact that the defense has been on the field constantly in this ball game for Ohio State. Then he's more tired. You're not going to use him that much on offense. He's just got a handful of plays on offense they want to use him for in this ball game. Okay, 20 second down and 10. The ball is out at the 20, and uh, Gamble's out of there as we get Hamby back into the game. Good play action. Uh, Krenzel's pass is right on the hands of Michael Jenkins. And Michael Jenkins will pick up a first down for the Ohio State Buckeyes. This combination of Krenzel and Jenkins won some ball games in the late going this season for the Bucks. And Craig Krenzel shows uh, great patience in the pocket. Jenkins is number 12 after the fake to Claret. Watch how long that Krenzel holds that ball before taking that lick and delivering a perfect ball for Jenkins. Right out in front, doesn't have to break stride. Those big hands suck it right in. And that is Ohio State's first, first down of the ball game. And it comes with 28 seconds to play, 26 and 25 counting in the first quarter. Chris Gamble is back in. Claret to the outside. Kane struck him down and get him right about the line of scrimmage as Roger McIntosh was over there to greet him. Well, and I'm not so sure that uh, Claret wasn't supposed to give the ball to Gamble on the reverse. They had blockers out in front, but he decided to hang on to it and paid for it. And so we finish the first quarter of play. It's Miami 7. And the Ohio State Buckeye is nothing. Last play of the first quarter. This is going to be a reverse from uh, Maurice Claret to Chris Gamble. But watch after the exchange between Krenzel and Claret. A little stumble right there. Claret does not give the ball to Gamble. And now there are six green shirts running down Maurice Claret. All the blockers had gone the opposite direction with Gamble. Well, here you are at the 31-yard line where it is second down and 10. That's a 32-yard line, closer. And this one goes no place as Will Fork is in there in a hurry to make a play. And a loss will be back to almost the 20. At 6'2", 350 pounds. Watch number 75 with unbelievable acceleration. Go straight ahead and take Maurice Claret back. Mix up in the blocking pattern there for the Buckeyes. So two plays in a row now. Their execution is just terrible. They get the 25-yard line for Ohio State. Now they're looking at third down and 17. So both defenses really have played quite well. Miami's offense has amounted to the forward pass. That's been nothing. the difference. And neither has Ohio State. Vance Gamble Jenkins with three wide outs for the Bucks. Time for Krenzel. Now he pulls it down, runs, goes to the 30-yard line. He was looking at the 32 for the first, the beginning of the old mark, but he had no chance as he was sawed off right on the 30, and he dropped his head down at the tackle, and that's dangerous. The secondary of Miami is just outstanding. Remember, they had to rebuild the entire secondary from last year, and all they did was go out and lead the nation in yards allowed passing. Back goes Roscoe Parrish to the right side. Andy Green will punt it, and he shoots off. Oh, 
Boy, Andy has had some year punting the football. Harris runs back and fields it. Goes all the way back to his seven-yard line. Now he's looking for help and won't get it. The Buckeyes put him on his back at the 13-yard line. So the Buckeye special teams people doing pretty well in this ball game. That was the beauty of a punt at 63 yards when they really needed something big. Miami Hurricanes are backed up for the first time tonight, starting at the 13-yard line. Dorsey pumps and lets it go deep down the sidelines for Andre Johnson, and he can't get to it. There's a penalty flag thrown back up here behind him. I don't think it involved Johnson and uh, Gamble. It might have. Yeah, Keith, it might have because Gamble got a real good shot on Andre Johnson. It was a double move. You saw the big pump fake by Ken Dorsey. Remember, Chris Gamble is a is new to playing defensive back for the Buckeyes. Little out and up move here. There's the out, and now the up, and there's the grab. Holding on the defense. The 10-yard yep. penalty. Nice Wasn't much of a grab, but no, enough to get the flag. So they move it on a holding call different uh, from pass interference. Swanee? Well, Coach, uh, Keith, <laughs> Keith and Coach, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not much of a move when he reaches out and grabs a guy like that, but the cool thing about it is he slows the receiver down just a tad and regains his balance. You know, a lot of times a good defensive back can get away with that simple move. That time he didn't, and here they are, first down up at the 23-yard line as Dorsey turns, hands to McGay, and he disappears into a crowd of folks right about the line of scrimmage. And again, Tim Anderson is the anchorman of the scrum. But you know, Swanee, one of the things about Gamble, because of his inexperience, he is such a great athlete, but I think that Miami has equal athletes, obviously, in Andre Johnson, that uh, can give him a nightmarish night. Well, I think you're absolutely correct. And I think in the 40 days they had to get ready for this game, what they really wanted to do is work on this technique, try and give him some skills to go along with that athletic ability. On second down and 10, Dorsey hands it off. McGay, he found some daylight this time, and he's got some size. He's 220-plus pounds, and he pounds it up to close to the 30-yard line, seven and, yards. And it's his longest run of the night, but we can see just what this kid's all about. The acceleration on the draw play here. Watch how quickly he hits that hole. Good blocking up in front there. Chris Myers with a block on Robert Reynolds. He can put one foot down, make his cut, and reach with the other foot and never lose any momentum. That's nope. what makes him so dangerous. Absolutely. No hesitation in Willis McGahee. It is third down and four now. Short four. The pass is in the air. Intercepted by Dustin Fox. He threw it right to him. And there's a turnover by Miami. The Buckeyes are sitting on the Miami side of the field. First down at the Hurricanes 37-yard line. The Buckeyes have done a good job affecting Ken Dorsey. They've sacked him twice tonight. Now trying to hit Roscoe Parrish. Watch Fox here. The route is going to come to the inside. But Dorsey, for some reason, just airmails the five foot nine Roscoe Parrish and an easy pick for Dustin Fox pressure there you see the great effort by Matt Wilhelm selling out affecting Ken Dorsey and his vision so now the Buckeyes start a possession with an opportunity to get some points on the scoreboard Crenzo the Claret bounces around finds a little bit about two yards on the play yeah, that's five rushes tonight. He still has negative yardage because of this great Miami defense and quickness. Up front four's doing the job. Penzel pulls it down, takes off. Got some help. He's going to pick up the first down for the Buckeye. Take it down close to the 25-yard line before Matt Walters brings it down. It'll be the 26. As a key block here by left guard. Adrian Clark, number 63, as Grenzel will hit it off the right side. But a lot of teams have hurt Miami with running quarterbacks. This is a designed draw play and well executed by the Buckeyes as they threaten 
for the first time tonight. Claret got a good block on Williams, and he was running behind Adrian Clark, who's a mirror, at least he's listed, at 355. <laughs> mirror. Mirror. Going to run it in the middle with Claret. And uh, he's got his second longest run of the night. Well, what Miami wants to do, obviously, is they want to stop that run up the middle, make him bounce it to the outside where Miami's team speed will take over. It's virtually impossible to run, outrun Miami east and west. You can't do it. You've got to get lucky. Somebody's got to fall down or something for you to do anything outside against it. Second down and seven. Claret, wiggling around in the middle. Again, there's nothing there. It's Jonathan Vilma this time coming up from his middle linebacker position and taking a leg away from Claret. Vilma is uh, very similar to Matt Wilhelm in the fact that he doesn't get blocked a lot. He's a very good athlete, moves around very well, explosive tackler, and he just mirrored Maurice Claret that time. Claret would move one way, Vilma th would move with him. Gamble is in the ball game as a wide up. Nobody in the backfield. Play clock ran out of. So they'll give up five yards as they burn the clock. Part of the snap. Delay. It's a five yard penalty and remains third down. Here's your Aflac trivia question for the ball game. Which was the last national championship team to have a freshman as their leading rusher? He not only was the leading rusher, he was about 60% of the offense for a while that season. And another mistake by Ohio State. Four penalties tonight for 25 yards. Remember their first play of the game. Before they could even run a play, they were penalized. Miami, remarkably, no penalties yet. Maurice Claret could be the second freshman to lead his team in rushing if they should win this ball game tonight. So far, they've been held in check. Here's the quarterback going right up the middle with it. And he takes a couple of pops, one in particular from uh, the big old safety, Sean Taylor. But he's uh, close to his first down. They stopped him about two yards short. You can see that uh, Krenzel has plenty of courage. He doesn't mind running with it. Check out Jonathan Vilma here, totally confused. Thinking it's a pass play all the way. He drops back almost as a safety on the play. And Krenzel gets close to a first down. Mike Nugent is in now on fourth down for a field goal try. And this will be 35 yards. Mike Nugent, who's had a very good year. They fake it. Andy Groom is the holder, Keith, one of the fastest Buckeyes. But they Didn't tried to run him on the right yep. side, and they came up short. Miami was sitting there and they didn't knock anybody off the line of scrimmage on there and Groom had no chance as they run the fake off the field goal try. Special teams coach Luke Fickle told me that they wanted to see if they could run a fake on a field goal try. Then that Andy Groom one of the fastest Buckeyes but that time Miami again a little bit faster. But midway through the second quarter of play the Buckeyes are hanging around. They only trail by seven. The Buckeyes gamble on running out of a field goal opportunity. Nugent 24 out of 26 this year and career 12 out of 17 from 35 yards. They don't get their first down and they lose the opportunity at three points. Miami comes back to the attack now from their own 17 yard line. Here's a penalty flag from across the way as the play is McGahee is taken down all the way back around the 12 yard line. Grant and Doss led the tacklers but let's see about the penalty from Randy Crystal. It's like it may be Miami's first penalty of the evening. But Jim uh, Trestle is going to regret that decision. I mean, that's a, almost a sure. I know there's nothing sure in this world, but. Illegal formation on the offense. Illegal formation against Miami. The umpire Steve Story, Don Crapel, the headlinesman, De Derek Bowers, the line judge, field judge is Terry Porter. Brad Van Avark, the side judge, back judge is John Robison, and the alternate is John Laurie. 
And they're all out of the Big 12 Conference. Ball is on the 12-yard line where it is first down and 15. McGee. 15-17. Interesting watching Willis McGee on that last run having both hands covering up that ball. Make it the 16, where it is second down, 11, with seven minutes to go in the first half. Seven to nothing, Miami leading. Dorsey sets to throw it and goes to the sidelines. The pass is caught by Ethnic Sands, and that will be a first down for the Hurricanes. That time the Buckeyes decided to bring Chris Gamble off his corner position and blitz Ken Dorsey. But he was so far away as he lined up trying to guard Johnson that he was late getting to the ball. And Dorsey had time to get it off and pick up that first down. Jake Gathers is in the ball game now for uh, Miami. Jason Gathers. Ball just short of the 30. Back goes Dorsey. Looking close, and it is caught down the middle, and it is good to about the 34-yard line to Jason Gethers. Where it is second down and six now for Miami. And uh, Roscoe Parrish is the man who scored the touchdown for them on a pass reception from Ken Dorsey. Dorsey loops it downfield, way downfield and beyond anybody's reach. Andre Johnson was on the dead run. Chris Gamble was running with him. And the way things are going, Chris is going to have a lot of plays and be a tired fellow when this game is over. Well, it's like Lynn Swan said. You can see 24 plays on defense to just five. Uh, his number one priority is to stay with Andre Johnson as he did on that play. But special teams are wearing tear on you as well, and he plays special teams. They say he doesn't get tired. I guess he doesn't. He <laughs> had 128 plays in the overtime win against Illinois. Oh. Yeah. That's unheard of. 36. Pass hummed. Intercepted. Buckeyes have it. That's Mike Doss. 30, 25, inside the 20 before he's pulled out of bounds by Willis Begay. Dorsey threw it hard, and it ricocheted the Doss. His eighth career interception, three-time All-American, just playing the ball. Watch him right here. Dorsey's going to throw this ball too hard. He really fires it off the hands of Andre Johnson, who should have caught the ball, but it was really humming. And maybe Matt Wilhelm got just a fingernail on that ball to disrupt the concentration of Andre Johnson. No disrupting this man's concentration, though. The leader of this Buckeye defense has set up his offense in great shape. Lydell Ross is in there as the single back now, a sophomore from Tampa, Florida, 210-pounder, and the fastest of all the Ohio State tailbacks. And he's got the ball. And he finds some room. That little slip and slide left and then right, and he's down inside the 15 at the 13. Running back coach Tim Spencer, a former teammate of mine in San Diego, where he was one of the most reliable guys we had. As they told me today that they got to get Lydell Ross in the game more. The Buckeyes will use two running backs, as we've seen, Claret and Ross, and they'll alternate Hall as well. But as you said, Keith, Ross has got great speed. He showed it on that little run. They're inside the 13. They'll mark it 12 officially. Second down and five. Krenzel gives it back to Ross again. And uh, there's no place to go this time. Easy. William Joseph leads the defensive surge and makes the tackle right about the line of scrimmage. Earlier, we asked you the Aflac trivia question, which was the last championship team to have a freshman as their leading rusher? The answer is the Georgia Bulldogs. 1980, Herschel Walker led the team to the national title with 1,616 yards rushing, and that play is from the Sugar Bowl. Back in 1946, Emil Sitko, as a freshman, ran for 346 yards at Notre Dame, but the effort of Walker was something special, really special. 
Third down and five. Pass is thrown, pass is caught. It'll be a first and goal to go for the Buckeyes. Chris Vance made the catch right in front of Glenn Short. Good pass by Krenzel. Pete, it was a great adjustment by Chris Vance. That ball was thrown, it made to differ with you, way behind Vance. And Vance saw the ball. Here he is. Watch him stop and have to reach way back for it. He comes to a complete stop. If the ball's out in front, perhaps Vance gets by Sharp and into the end zone. As it is, first and goal. You're right. He wasn't that good. <laughs> Ben Hartsock is in the ball game now as a tight end for Ohio State and the ball lofted to the corner. No, out of bounds. Michael Jenkins got it, but he didn't get a foot down as he was dueling with Sean Taylor. It'll be second down and goal. That's a great ba uh, battle because Sean Taylor is normally a safety, but at 6'3", 220, he's going to go out and guard Michael Jen Jenkins at 6'5". See how close he came. Right foot out of bounds. Great call. No question. Not even a question for Jim Tressel. He's begging for a call there. At center, you've got to change. Nick Mangold has come in at center. That's a tough place to make a substitution at center. Miami looked like they were offside. Yeah, I think uh, Vince Wolfert, seeing that freshman center in there, thought he'd try to get a jump on him. But he was jumping all the way through the neutral zone and offsides. Mangol, a freshman out of Kettering, in relief of Stepanovich. But Stepanovich had moved over to uh, tackle behind Shane Olivier. And now what do we got here? Do we have offside? Offside. Yep. Keith, uh, you can see that the right tackle here, actually, it's Shane Olivier lined up as a tight end. He flinched a little bit, but Wolfert was so far offside that it may have blocked the view of the official seeing Olivier jump. Olivier at 310 going out to a tight end spot. <laughs> That's what they call their jumbo package. <laughs> That's, a, That's a great car. Second down and goal at the two yard line. Mango is still in there at the center spot. Frenzo gives it to Ross. Ross picking his way in the melee easy. and they roll forward into. Not quite. <laughs> it looked like for all the world he was going to be able to roll over the top and get in the end zone and they wouldn't let him. Well, this is the guy they need to get in the game at 230 pounds. Claret would have scored easily on that play. Good effort by Lydell Ross, but this is the guy you've got to get in the ball game and into the end zone. It's third and goal at the one yard line. Claret is 227 pounds. Quarterback sneak. Touchdown. No, I don't think so, Keith. That's a one-arm signal by the Well, this guy on this side put That'd two up. Fourth down. Now he's taking it down. So it's it's inches. That's a, another questionable call and decision by Jim Tressel. You put Claret in the game, and you don't use him. Yeah, I would call timeout. I'd reshuffle my papers and figure out our play calling here as the Buckeyes are squandering scoring chances. On fourth and goal, as Ohio State tries to tie the ball game, Stepanovich has gone back to the center spot. Mangold, a freshman, had been in there, and he couldn't root a hole. Now Stepanovich is in. Florette is your tailback. Fourth and a half a yard. The quarterback keeps it, and he's in there. Craig Krenzel went off the right side of the center behind the guard. And Olivier, and he got just enough for the touchdown. Oh, he really showed his toughness too, Keith. Very patient to slide to the right side. He took a heck of a hit from linebacker Roger McIntosh, but spun, as he has done so many times this year, making big plays, spun all the way into the end zone. Now it is Mike Nugent 
for the extra point. The holder is the punter, Andy Groom. And everything works. And we are tied at 7-7 with two minutes and 28 seconds to play in the first half. That's a great effort by Krenzel as he not only gets inside of McIntosh, but McDougal as well. Well, the Buckeyes cashing in on the turnover have put themselves on the scoreboard. 7-7 tie with 2 minutes and 28 seconds to play. If they had gone ahead and kicked that field goal, <laughs> they'd be leading 10-7. <laughs> yeah, they would, Keith. They... Remember, this is a Miami team that averages 42 points a game. Talk about great Buckeye defense. They've been stressing patience, patience, patience. We'll see how patient the Miami Hurricanes can be. It's Andre Johnson standing back there along with Jason Gathers now for the kickoff. And this is rooted. I mean, it's beyond the field of play. Pretty good combination of defenses for Ohio State. Unbelievable for Miami. No yards rushing. McGahee, nine rushes, eight yards. Dorsey sacked twice for a minus eight. That's how you get zero rushing. So here they come. Dorsey back. Has a roll. He's hit. The ball rolls loose. Beanbag goes down. Ohio State ball. Kenny Peterson knocked it loose. Darian Scott recovered it. Second sack of the night for Kenny Peterson. Here he is right here. Watch his speed as he gets around the offensive line. Sherko Haji Razuli gets beat there by Peterson. And Dorsey does not sense the backside pressure. Ball was out. The arm was going forward, but he went without the ball. That's why it was a fumble. The minute you saw the beanbag go down, that confirmed fumble. Lydell Ross is the running back, the deep back for Ohio State. Prinzel hands it to him, and he's running in the middle for about four yards. The snap of the ball was from the 14-yard line. D.J. Williams made the tackle. A couple of things that defensive coordinator Mark D'Antonio told me they have to do. They have to defend the middle of the field. Now Ohio State on offense with Ross getting absolutely nothing there. But uh, this defense of Ohio State affecting the quarterback. A couple of interceptions. Now a fumble. A plus two turnover ratio for Ohio State. And that's right on track for the Buckeyes. Second down and eight from the 12-yard line. Across comes number 94, William Joseph. Let's see if a Buckeye moves. Craig Crenshaw didn't think so. After going the first quarter without a penalty. He's right. Probably hard count. Maybe even a little head bob and yeah, hard count. Yeah, a hard count without the head bob. That's not easy to do. But he used his voice perfectly and pulled off sides William Joseph easily. Second down and three now as the ball goes to the seven and Maurice Claret is the tailback or the single back. He's got it. He's got a touchdown. Alex Toponovic, the center, made it happen. We talked about just how punishing a runner he can be and how decisive. Now this game is being taken over by Ohio State at the end of this first half. A great run by Claret to get into the end zone with ease. Nugent will kick out of Groom's hole for the extra point. It's good. You have a minute, 10 seconds remaining to play in the first half. And the Big Ten champions have taken the lead. Ohio State 14, Miami 7. The BCS National Championship game at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. 
Keith, you talked about the great block by Mark Stepanovich. Let's take a look at it as he gets two for the price of one. First on Joseph and then on Vilma. Good double team there. He sees the linebacker. He seals him to the inside. That's all Maurice Claret needed. And so the Buckeyes have converted two Miami turnovers into touchdown, and they lead 14 to 7 with a minute and 10 to go to the half. The kickoff. High, long, beyond the field of play. Nugent, big leg. Keith, you just talked about the mistakes. This is three turnovers, last three possessions for Miami. That Goss interception led to Grenzel's sneak there. Kenny Peterson with the sack and fumble. And now Claret behind the block of Alex Stepanovich for the touchdown. Do you think momentum is wearing red? I do. And white. Or silver, if you will. All three minor turnovers, two interceptions in the fumble on the shoulders of Dorsey. From the 20, here come the Kings, and they'll hand it off to Willis McGahee looking for the sideline, and he finds it about nine yards. Keith, I think that's the first time they've tried to get McGahee to the perimeter. It is. And with his speed, that's a good idea. But remember, Miami now, as we come to the end of the first half, they only have one timeout to use, having to have burned two in the first quarter. Buckeye defense got some respite. They were on the field a lot in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, the offense uh, held the ball for a while and gave them a chance to get their win back. Now the Canes go to the shotgun. They got three wide outs. Darcy's got a lot of time. Comes this way with it. Goes short to McGay. And Willis McGay makes the catch for the first down. Move the chains. It'll go up to about the 33 where it's a first down. Will Allen, who made two interceptions this season to save ball games for Ohio State, Cincinnati, and uh, uh, Michigan. Dorsey turns, gives to McGahee. He's looking for some daylight, and the Buckeye defense doesn't give him much time to go shopping. They shut the door on him pretty quickly with Will Smith finally taking him down. The one th thing the Buckeye defensive line does, they don't stay blocked very long. They get off their blocks very quickly, locate the runner, and then gang tackle them. It is second down and 12. The ball back on the 32-yard line. Dorsey again with some room to move and time to light a book. Throws it in the ground. Incomplete. But now you're seeing why Ohio State's been effective. That defensive line is winning the battle. Only rushing three or four. That allows the Buck secondary to drop seven or eight. And if you drop seven or eight, you're going to make it very difficult for the quarterback to find anybody open. Good job of the offensive line, but look at Dorsey. Can't find a green shirt to throw it to. Finally has to throw it away. Third down at 12. Ball on the 32. Under center, turns, gives it to McGay. He's got some room here, but uh, they've got him a yard short of the first down. And the clock shows 10 seconds and counting in the first half. Canes come up without a huddle trying to get one more play and now they decide and let's go to the clubhouse and see if we can sort this thing out. So at the end of the first half of play it is 14 to 7 Ohio State leading Miami in the BCS National Championship game. Coach, so much was made of the speed of this game, and it looks like the speed of your defense is really the difference. Well, we've got a good defense. They've got a great offense as well. This is a national championship team. Two great teams playing as hard as they can with a lot of class. This is just a great one. I know you're not going to concede victory until it's over. What do you expect in the second half? It's going to be a battle. It's going to be down to the final second. And we're going to play as hard as we can and see if we deserve it. Good luck, Coach. Thank you. Pretty simple. But hard. Mike Nugent will kick off. Gathers and Johnson wait for it. The kick again will not be returned. Hard to get a run back against Nugent when there's no win. So what do you think, Dan? The philosophy here for Miami? Poke around with a run or just load it up and fire the cannon? Well, they're going to have to win first down, basically, Keith. 
Larry Coker said that he just needs four yards. Don't worry about the big game. We just want to get four yards, four yards, be patient on offense. But so far in 13 first down plays in that first half, Miami has netted just 12 yards. That's incredible. So here we go with the second half. And Ohio State leading 14 to 7. It's McGahee with the first play. And slashing over the right side will get about three yards before Will Smith, who has stood tall tonight, makes the tackle. It's only a three-yard gain, but that's more like it for McGahee and this offense. You can see he's running a lot harder that time. Keith, you talked about how he can put one foot on in the ground and either cut back quickly or accelerate. There's no hesitation in his game, except in the first half. The Buckeyes caused him to hesitate. Second down and seven. Dorsey turns, quickly throws, passes caught. First tackle missed, second tackle made. It's Roscoe Parrish who makes you take a deep breath every time he gets the ball in his hand. He is only 5'9", 165 pounds, but he is as quick as a shepherd. Well, if you see where Dorsey's throwing the ball today, it, this right here tells me that Ohio State is having success with their deep zone. Two interceptions down the middle of the field. Both came after Roscoe Parrish got loose for the touchdown. Johnson sands Parrish. The wide outs, third down and three. Dorsey getting pressure, gets it away. Dumped it to McGay out of the backfield. Hammered. And it looks like he's a little bit short of the 30-yard line, and he took a lick from Dustin Fox. Good pressure that time by C. Grant, who came on a blitz from his weak linebacker position. And excellent tackling on the outside. Watch Grant come free. That forces Dorsey to get rid of it in a hurry. But now McGahee, instead of lowering his shoulder, decides to spin back to the inside. He lost track of where he was on the field and what he needed for the first down. He came up a yard short. So they put it away with uh, Freddie Capshaw kicking it to Chris Gamble, who lets it roll around on the ground. And it'll roll dead at about the 27-yard line. Ivan Douglas is in there at the tackle spot now, left side for the Buckeyes as they have their first possession of the second half. Craig Krenzel gives it to Maurice Claret. He spins out of one tackle and will get a couple of yards, moving from the 27-yard line to the 30. And finally, it is Sean Taylor that takes him down. Well, in the first half, it was Craig Krenzel doing it with his legs. 11 yards on this quarterback draw, and they ran a quite a few quarterback draws. In fact, 45 yards on eight carries makes Prenzel the leading rusher in this ballgame. When you're talking about McGahee and Florette, the quarterback finishes it off with a touchdown. That one tied the score at 7 all. They get a three-yard pickup for Florette, close to four, as the ball is finally put down just short of the 32-yard line. Got it again, going to the outside, broke the tackle, gets the first down, gets up across the 40-yard line, and he stepped on the chalk at the 42. He ran out of the tackle of Maurice Sykes. And this is all Maurice Claret deciding he didn't like it this way, then he came all the way across the backside of the formation. Here is Sykes right here. Watch the power with that straight arm. Just pushes Sykes to the ground. Best run of the night for Maurice Claret right there. Gives him a first down at the 42. <laughs> Movement on the left side of the line, Ohio State. Looked like Adrian Clark might have lost his concentration for a moment. He certainly lost his balance, but he's balancing a lot, isn't he? You get that 355 pounds moving, it's hard to stop it. It's a lot of weight on one hand, too. He's down in his stance. The loss of five takes it back to the 37-yard line, where it'll be first down and 15. We are in the third quarter of play. Ohio State leading 14-7 to over Miami. Frenzel gives it to Claret. And Vilma is right there. Jonathan Vilma, who had slipped to the outside and slanted back in, and he got him. And to give you an idea, Keith, of uh, just how well these defenses are playing, 
check out what Willis McGahee and Maurice Claret have done coming into tonight's championship game. 27 touchdowns, 14 for Claret, both well over 1,000 yards. Tonight, totally different story. A loss of another yard. His numbers are unbelievable. Claret averages six yards a carry normally. Campbell is in the ball game with a wide out now. And they go to the shotgun for Prenzel. Give a little time. Pressure coming from the backside. Gets it off, and it's almost entered. Oh, my goodness. He had it on his fingertips, 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 and then it was gone. Now Matt Walters really forced uh, Krenzel to throw that ball too hard to Maurice Claret. Good pressure by Walters, and that uh, made it a very difficult one-handed attempt by Maurice Claret. Matt Walters for a big man. He's in there at 262. Very quick. You have to be quick to play football in any position for the Hurricanes. Seems so. Third down and 15. Renzo deep. Down the sidelines. Gambo It's down inside the 10 and Fumbo, but he's down. He's down at the six yard line. Alfonso Marshall caught him from behind. He had to catch him from behind because he's beat so badly. Total speed by Gamble as he outraces Marshall down the sidelines. Hits the ground, the ball comes out. Good call by the officials and a huge play for the Ohio State Buckeyes, the Buckeyes as they continue to dominate this game. Close to being a fumble, but the knee is down there and the ball comes out. 57 yards, that is the longest Ohio State offensive play pass play of the year. Prenzel keeps it. Throws it to the end zone and it is picked off. Picked off by Sean Taylor. He threw it right to him. He had double coverage on his intended receiver and no chance to get it there and Florette Claret has stolen the ball. Time. Yes, he did, Keith. Maurice Claret with the play of the game, perhaps, as Sean Taylor going down the sidelines, reminiscent of George Teague of Alabama stealing the ball from Miami a few years back. Ball's Watch in the Claret. wrong hand. It should have been in the other side, shouldn't it? That's a great point, Keith. But did he really pull it away? The officials say yes, he did. Mm, close. Grenzel trying to force this one. Great read by Taylor as he comes back to take the ball away from Hartsock. And then with the ball in his right hand, exposes it to Maurice Claret right there. And in the judgment of the officials, when they hit the ground, Claret had more possession than Taylor. And so the Buckeyes are still sitting in the Catbird seat down at the 28-yard line on the Miami side. Lydell Walsh is the single back now as Prenzel drops and throws and delivers it out here and he took his eye off the ball and dropped it. It's an incomplete forward pass. Now, here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith and Dan, 13s are lucky this year for the Buckeyes. They are not suffering from tridiscodophobia, the fear of 13s. <laughs> they were 13-0. Coach Trestle is now 13-3. The Buckeyes were ranked 13th in the preseason AP polls. They've got 13 seniors that are leading the team. They just had their 13th president. Unfortunately, and this doesn't even apply anymore, they were 13-point underdogs, and they put 13 teams on the All-Big East team, Miami did. And if you add up Ken Dorsey and Wilson McGahee's number, you get 13. That's a bit of a stretch, but right now the Buckeyes will take it. Right now, they're looking at third down and 12. Easy. And there's not much there for that one as uh, Krenzel rolling around trying to get loose and running to the left side where he saw a lot of green grass, but he couldn't get to it. But and that so drop play, Keith, excuse me, does put Nugent in a better position, better angle for this uh, field goal. So a conservative call, but a smart call getting the ball inside the hash marks. It's a good-sized kick, though. 
going to be 44 yards. Broom holds. Nugent's got a big leg. He's kicked every one of the kickoffs into the end zone. Puts the foot under it. Plenty of leg on it. And it's good. And the Buckeye lead goes to 17-7. to So one corner of the stadium gets very quiet here as the Red Roars and the Buckeyes lead by 10. Miami with the ball now, down by 10 points here with 8.22 to go in the third quarter of play. They possess the ball, first down at the 39-yard line. Dorsey comes up for it, and the pass is caught by Kelly Winslow, pick up of about six yards on the play. C. Grant, the tackle. So C. Grant, who's been banged up a couple of times, but keeps coming back, and he's still the shadow of Kellen Winslow. And there, that's what Miami has to do, get back to their original game plan, which features the tight end, Kellen Winslow, on short pass routes and have him break tackles for the bigger games. But they need positive plays right now to get back into a good frame of mind. Handed off to the game. He's in. And he's got a yard or two. See Grant on that tackle. Dave Perry, who is as good a source of authority and opinion about rules. David, you had a best look we could give you on that uh, fumble, uh, the takeaway, if you will. Keith, from my view, it looks like the ball was coming loose. The Ohio State kid did, in fact, rip it, pull it out. We had a little tug of war afterwards, but it appears like a good call from the covering official. Hey. Resulted in three points, and it's a 17 to seven. Pretty heads up play for a freshman, 19 years old, to make that. <laughs> Dorsey wants to go deep, goes down the sideline. The pass is incomplete, intended for Andre Johnson. He was a little short. He had him. Yeah, it was another one of those double moves, fake to the uh, post and then back to the corner. If you watch Johnson, great speed. There's the post route, and now back to the outside. Ball is underthrown, and Johnson loses his footing on this good field. And Capcho is in the punt. I at the 10, ball squirted loose for a moment. What do we have? I think they have a halo violation, halo but violation. I'm not sure this is a good call. It appeared that uh, the Hurricanes gave Gamble plenty of room to make that catch. Andre Roll was the man closest to him, who's a cornerback. Remember, it's a two-yard halo, and they must have thought that uh, Roll was within that. Well, that's what's called as a halo violation. It's a penalty that moves the ball and uh, it moves it in favor of Ohio State. Carrying the ball, it's Claret. And from the 21-yard line, he's up to about the 23. 20, what do you, where do you see in the swing of things here in this ball game? Well, well basically, I see an Ohio State offense doing the same things they've been doing all year. A very conservative approach to the game. I think you give most of the credit for their success to the offensive line, protecting the football. Then it goes back to Craig Crenshaw. When nothing is there, he's not taking any chances. He does not want to create the turnover. He wants to keep that plus turnover margin in this ball game by not doing anything silly. Fortunately for him, he's a tough kid. He's in the shotgun, second down, and nine. Now takes off with the ball and breaks the tackle. The second one takes it down at the 25. That would be Jamal Green. <laughs> Jamal Green right now is matched up against a freshman, Rob Sims, at that tackle position for Ohio State. And you know, Keith, uh, you saw while Swanee was telling us about how Ohio State's getting back to what they want to do. Part of what they want to do, as we saw with the play clock in there, is milk that clock all the way down. Now, that was pretty close for comfort that time, but you'll see that they're trying to extend the game, shorten the game, by running the play clock down and not snapping it until they are within five seconds almost every time. 
Krenzel is the game's leading rusher. He has 10 carries for 51 yards and a touchdown. And he's back looking for a receiver. Let's it go to the sidelines. Has him. Throws it right on his hands. No problem with it. He's out of bounds. Michael Jenkins had that foot on the line on the chalk. And he does not get a catch. Yeah, bad awareness of the sideline by Jenkins. He didn't have to jump for this ball. This ball is show, thrown right about shoulder height. And at 6'5", Jenkins knows, why did I jump up in the air? If I just drag my feet, it's going to be a first down. That right foot is out of bounds. Andy but why Groom, did he jump? Andy Groom is in the punt then. 56, 44, and 63 tonight. Got a little pressure there and didn't get all of it. And hooks it out of bounds. So that's his poorest punt of the night. It's also the first time there's been a green shirt in his face. That's 30 yards. And the clock stops at 5.05 to go in the third quarter. And Ohio State sitting on a 10-point lead. Keith, this uh, Ohio State defense has shut down some of the best offenses in the nation this year. You can see Washington State, Penn State, both over 30 points a game. Just got seven. And tonight holding Miami down to seven with five minutes to go here in the third. Running with the game. Triple lick right upside the head as he crossed midfield and goes down at the 49-yard line. Donnie Nicky hit him. And that will help settle down Ken Dorsey. Good run on first down, winning the battle on first down with a run to McGahee. Dorsey started 8 out of 10. Since then, 6 out of 11 with a couple of interceptions and a fumble. You can pick up 6, 7 yards on first down. You're headed toward a win. Second down and 4 here. Buckeye's defense jumping around. Dorsey throws it outside and misses. <laughs> The intended receiver, and there's a penalty flag thrown to the linesman across the way. Ethnic Sands was a man breaking for the ball, but it was well off the mark. That blitz by Ohio State really threw the timing off of not only that pass play, but uh, before the ball was even snapped. It's against Miami. So a well-timed blitz by Mark D'Antonio, defensive coordinator for the Buckeyes. Watch Doss come up. That forces Dorsey to change the play. Now Quatrine Hill is not set, nor is McGahey. The ball is snapped. Illegal. For second down and nine. Down the middle. Front. Winslow. Just a bullet down the middle of the field, and Kellen Winslow had broken free and makes the catch in front of Fox. Boy, yeah, then you see the attitude of Winslow after the catch, trying to fire his teammates up. Got a lot, a lot of that from his daddy, Kellen Sr. Watch 81. Right down the middle of the field. Again, the zone is there. Great adjustment by Winslow to make that catch. And, and Dan, you also have to love the fact that Winslow got up and got his body in front of a ball. You know, a lot of receivers always want to catch it with their hands. But you and I know, when you throw it into a crowd like that, if you get the body between the ball, you protect it and make the catch. And then you add the attitude. Good package. Run it, McGee, to the outside. They put him on the chalk at the 21-yard line. They gave him all the way down to the 21, and that's close to a first down. Stretch it out. Looks it's close. It is the first down. Well, and you know what he did at the end of that run, Keith? He knew what he needed, as opposed to earlier in the game when he came up short of the first time, first down. That time, he got it by an inch. Kellen Sr. couldn't stand sitting quietly in the stands anymore. He's going down on the field. Better keep a jersey away from him. <laughs> yeah. 21-yard line, first down for Miami on the Buckeye end of the field. Ohio State leading 17-7, and we've got three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Okay, he is deep. Darcy throwing over the head. Got the intended receiver way over his head. Johnson was over there, well covered by Gamble. And Bill's going back to coaching. Huh? 
I guess the first class is a big bad, huh? <laughs> Quickly in the middle. Caught again by Winslow. And he's close to the 15 yard line with it. Matt Wilhelm, the big guy at 6'5, 245, got a hold of him. Showing the hands that uh, his daddy displayed many times over the middle. Look at him reach out. This is a tight end. Now he's more like a wide receiver, but he is quite a weapon. Only a sophomore. Miami's had some great tight ends. And this man's son definitely stepping up into that. Well, that fellow Shockley that played there for a little while was pretty good. And Bubba Franks, too. But again, Miami has to use a timeout. And it comes at 2.44 to go in the third quarter. And they have two timeouts remaining. Go back to it at third down and five on the 16-yard line, trailing by 10 points. Yeah, important to get the right play call, the, the right timing. But if you remember back to the first half, Miami used two timeouts. That allowed them, that gave them just one when they got the ball back with a minute to go and really couldn't mount any type of hurry-up offense to get even a field goal at the end of the first half. Tight game like this, you want to have all those timeouts at the end of the game. Third and five, right in front of the goalpost on the 16-yard line. Johnson and Paris. Consider Winslow. A very big possibility here. They throw it underneath. He goes to Winslow, and he's going to have the first down as he gets past the 10-yard line and gets stopped at the nine by C. Grant. We've seen his attitude, we've seen his hands. This was just pure speed as Winslow ran away from C. Grant. Came off the line of scrimmage and has Grant in his hip pocket. Good throw by Dorsey. First and goal at the nine now for Miami. McGahee to the outside. <laughs> and looking to see if he hit the chalk and he didn't. So he just simply outran him into the corner. So close to getting to the sidelines and going out of bounds, but carrying that 220 pounds with almost the speed of light, it seems, the time he gets in there. Uh, hits off the left side, doesn't like it there, and there is your speed of light all the way to the end zone, and it's not even close for Ohio State stopping him. And the kick is good by Todd Sievers, and it is now a three-point lead for the Ohio State Buckeyes. As Miami comes back to score the touchdown. That ball is kicked beyond the field of play. Ohio State had a first and goal at the six. Lost the ball on interception, got it back, came away with three, and now Miami takes it and goes down and scores the touchdown. And that's only the fifth rushing touchdown given up by Jim Trestle's Buckeye defense. That stat was good enough to lead the nation. Alex Kapanovic will come in at center now. He's been in and out with Mango getting some playing time. Claret lines up at the deep back. Prinzel sets him up and gives it to Claret. At the right side, he's got a yard, and that's all. Vilma was the first man to make contact. McDougal put him away. Well, they don't even give him a yard. They put the tail end of the ball almost touching the 20-yard line. The linebackers, Vilma Harris. Got to wonder about this uh, Buckeye defense, just how tired they are. Campbell is in on offense on this play. We've got four wideouts for the Buckeyes. Here's Claret all the way down the bottom of the screen. Shotgun for Krenzel, pulls it down, takes off. 
seemingly had more room on the left side, chose to go right, and he's cut down rather quickly. And they're looking at third and six. And what they're doing is they're forcing Miami to unload the box. You talk, always hear about loading up the box with eight and nine men, but when you spread out the defense with your offensive personnel, putting Claret out wide, that forced Miami to adjust. It only had six men in the box. That's why the draw play was called. Third and six. The outcome of this ball game might be in the making right about here. A lot of things can go with a moment like this, and Ohio State, perhaps realizing it, has called a timeout. So they have two remaining, and uh, the time remaining in the third quarter is only 40 seconds. And again, a team that uh, realizes that it's a third down play. Important to get the right play called with the right tempo. Aerial coverage of tonight's game provided by Tostitos, Hank Small, the pilot, Brent Johnson, the cameraman. Beautiful day and beautiful evening in Tempe, Arizona. And a beautiful game. Oh, yeah, that's a, <laughs> that's a trifecta there. Miami gets rolling downhill, though. Woof. It's hard to stop it. And right here is could be a very, very big play in this ball game. Buckeyes can pick up their first down and keep possession and give their defense a little more resting time. It's very important. Miami forces Ohio State into a punt here, unless Andy Groom comes up with another one of his 63 yarders. They should get pretty good field position. And Krenzel only has three completions on the evening out of 11 throws, Keith. That's Gamble in motion. Pressure coming. Krenzel breaks away. Pressure's coming, chasing him down, and he's going to keep the ball and be taken down by Andrew Williams, and that will bring up the punt. Again, it's immediate pressure by Jerome McDougal, 95. That forces Krenzel out of the pocket, and now it's the speed. There is Andrew Williams, 99, and D.J. Williams coming up along with Sykes. That may Maurice be Sykes, Maurice. I think, yeah, is the Maurice player Sykes. shaking up on the sidelines. It right, just tweaked his left knee right there. Krenzel diving for the first down. And coming up three yards short. So here's Ohio State now. They've got to punt the ball. The last punt that Groom had, he sort of hooked it to 30 yards. Uh, the previous three had been outstanding. Well, like you said, Keith, uh, Miami put pressure on him. Yep. And they are very good at blocking punts. Well, you, I would think, would expect they'll be going again. Full bore this time. And if the room gets off a low punt of any type, Roscoe Parrish just dynamite, averaging 13 and a half yards per punt return this season. So I think what we're saying here in a very direct way, Andy Groom, it's in your court. 10 seconds, 11 seconds, now 10, counting, counting down, 8, 7, 5. No need to snap. No, don't have to. Third quarter's over. It's a 17-14 ball game, Ohio State. All right, here we come to the pivotal punt. Of the moment at least as we start the fourth quarter of play andy groom should hit it around the 13. he does he gets some air under it it's not his longest of the night but it's a good one and it's going to go dead on the sidelines and roll out of bounds and it turns out to be a very good punt. last time miami had the ball they went 77 plays 55 yards got the ball to their playmakers kellen winslow three catches for 35 yards 35 tough yards 
And that was finished off by this beautiful reverse of this field by Willis McGahey from nine yards out. McGahey started the drive with a six yard run on first down right here. And then he finished it with a touchdown. 49 yard punt by Andy Groom. Put the ball out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. And here's Miami going to work. Quick shot to Roscoe Parrish. Money. Where do you, what do you see working here now with the Miami offense? Well, I think what they're doing is just get, getting back to their basic game plan. Ohio State's dropping people back. They're trying to put some pressure on Dorsey. Now all the receivers are doing is getting their bodies in front of the coverage and taking what the defense is giving them, the short pass. First make the catch. Don't worry about trying to break a tackle or make a big run. And if you turn that field and you've got some space, take advantage of it. Second down and two. They run for it, and they get it with McGahee. And they had the coat to him because he was close to getting out of the pack. He takes the ball across the 40 to the 41. And, Keith, if he breaks out of the pack, nobody on this Ohio State defense is going to catch him. He displayed his speed the last time when he reversed his field and took it in untouched. Look at the moves here. Now the power. Explosion. You hear that term all the time. It's speed, it's quickness, but most important, it's intensity. Let's see if they go back to it. Yep. And he's got daylight. And he's going to get it up to about the 40, close to the 45. But how do you win 38 games and only lose one? Well, you perform well in the fourth quarter. Remarkable stat right there. No interceptions for Dorsey. He's been bounced around a few times tonight. He fumbled once. He threw two interceptions in the first half. But now we are in Dorsey time. Second down and six. Quick shot again coming this way to Ethnic Sands, and that's another first down. Dakin and Duncan. Pretty good company for Ken Dorsey. All-time consecutive wins by a starting quarterback. And this one, obviously, his last chance to tie the record of Chuck Ely. And said the other day that he planned, wanted to, try to play on Sunday. I think he can. He's a winner. Ball is on the 46-yard line of Ohio State. A first down for the Hurricanes. And Dorsey puts it in the air. It's slapped down. Knocked down by Darian Scott. That's the best play in a long time for the Buckeye defense. Darian Scott. Recognizing the short three-step drop of the quarterback, got his hands up in the air and snuffed that ball out. What an athletic move by Darian Scott, top of the screen, working on Vernon Carey. Carey does a great job keeping him away from the quarterback, but couldn't prevent the athletic move to knock it down. Second down and 10. Jason Gethers, the man on this side. And now uh, Dorsey's has changed the play of the Ohio State crowd, and they're dominant. Making a lot of noise, and again, he can't get his engine running, and he goes down about the line of scrimmage as Will Smith makes another defensive play for Ohio State. Will Smith is a really talented young man. We've seen him pick up a couple of sacks. He also will drop back into pass coverage, and his main asset is his speed as he displayed that time. Junior out of Utica, New York, 6'4", 250. Shotgun. Dorsey a lot of time. Pass thrown in the middle. Pass is caught by Winslow. He's past the marker. First down, Miami. And what a shot Winslow took. But the play starts with Willis McGahee right here picking up the blitzer. C. Grant, number six. Great job there. Watch the toughness here as Will Allen bounces Winslow to the ground. Ball is at the 35-yard line. Winslow has caught seven balls now in the game for 87 yards. Go 
Kelsey again, a lot of time for the corner, incomplete. Running under it, short of it, Roscoe Parrish, Dustin Fox covering. But the pressure of Ohio State is forcing Dorsey to throw the deep ball too long. His timing is off on the deep ball. He's throwing it too flat. He's not putting enough air under the ball and allowing his speed receivers like Parrish and Johnson to adjust to the ball. The ball is just coming out too flat and too far. There's the pressure he's been facing from this great Ohio State front four. Second and ten. Short tip. Whoa. My goodness, Mike Doss had one hand on it. The ball is three inches lower at six points. No question, Keith. That's why he's a three-time All-American. Doss recognizes this. Again, it's a quick three-step drop. Watch him break. Stepping in front of Andre Johnson, and that one would have been six for Ohio State. Clock running at 11.53 to play now in the fourth quarter. Ivers had the ball for quite a bit at the start of this fourth quarter. Over three minutes. Dorsey setting up the screen. They bust up the screen. I mean, they bust up everything. Will Allen coming like a truck. Takes on McGahee and takes him down. And the trainers are on the field in a hurry for Miami. McGahee is down. Yeah, this is a real serious hit Will Allen put on Willis McGahee hit him low and they're looking at his left leg right now. Will Allen with two big shots one on Winslow and then this one. Oh my goodness. Oh Lord. That is a serious knee injury for Willis McGay. Yep. Time out. We'll be back. Willis McGay the big sophomore tailback taken off the field with a seems hardly anything but serious when you see the hit that he takes on it. You see the shoulder pad come in and hit it on the inside part of that knee and uh, it's gone. Clean hit by Will Allen but a devastating injury for Willis McGay. Here we have now a 54 yard field goal try Both by Tom easy. Seavers. It's no good. His longest in his career had been 53 yards at Florida. But that one was just a little bit out of the zone. You know, Keith, obviously Miami needed those points to tie the game. But psychologically right now, they are really going to be challenged. That injury happened in front of their bench. Their star player is done for the evening. Now they've got to find a way to regroup mentally as much as anything. Seriously. To get back in the right frame of mind to win this title. Ohio State takes over at their own 37 yard line. First down, they lead by three points. And we're in the fourth quarter. Crimson gives to Claret. And the Hurricanes jump all over him after a yard or so. 11-15 to play in the football game. You got four wideouts, five wideouts now as they flex a, a tight end. And it's second down. And Prenzel's pass short of the first down marker to Michael Jenkins. Jenkins drops his shoulder and pounds it and gets the first down. Only a second catch of the night, only the fourth completed pass of the night for Craig Krenzel. But uh, finding Michael Jenkins, who's made so many big plays for the Buckeyes, especially in the fourth quarter, along with his quarterback, offensive line, almost did a good job until Matt Walters drops the QB on his wallet. Well, these two guys hooked up to win the Wisconsin game, and, uh, and obviously in that Purdue game. Same thing. First down. Ball at the 48 yard line. Taking his time. Pressure coming. 
pass away, and a wounded goose goes down the field and falls incomplete. And it was Jonathan Vilma who leveled Craig Prenzel. Uh, you got to wonder how many more shots Prenzel can take. Remember, he's rushed the ball 12 times tonight. He's been knocked down another half a dozen. Watch Vilma, 51. This I is the type of shot. Keith, I think you're right. He may have a shoulder injury. It's coming over the sideline very slowly, but he is off the ground and now to the ground. <laughs> Tough guy. Drew Carter is going into the ball game now. He's a wide receiver. Play clock running way down. Real slow getting the last scrimmage. Not going to make it. Yeah, I think this they did. Barely. Yeah, Red fights for a couple of yards, getting it close to midfield. I was surprised. I thought that Quinzel was coming out that time because he really took a lick from Bill. He, he may have wanted to, you know, but the, the coach just sent another play in there. Didn't send a substitute for him. How about Krenzel? Very judicious with his completions tonight. One in each quarter. Here's that shot by Vilma, 51. Well, the fact that he got turned a little bit by the other contact may have helped him. He would have gone down just flat on his back. Vilma on him. Right on. <laughs> Throwing. Bullet. Pass caught. 40 yard line. First down to Chris Gamble. He is tough, and he's on his way someday to being a doctor. He may need a doctor. Yeah. He's, been, he's been sacked 31 times on the year. This time the offensive line does a good job. Still gets a couple of nudges there from Miami, but look at Gamble stepping in front of Glenn Sharp there, shielding him away from the, using his body to shield uh, the defender away from the ball. Boy, 23 hits on the turf 21 times. Uncle. This is the guy, though, that his teammates named the offensive MVP for their season. 13 0 season. Claret wiggles through. He's been close a couple of times to getting away, but they got him again with a hip pocket, and here's Todd Harris. Well, Keith and Dan, you pointed out how tough he is and how smart he is. Check this out. He's a molecular genetics major at Ohio State. And let me just read you a question from his molecular genetics 701 final. And you guys can answer this one. How do humans having linear chromosomes avoid losing vital genetic information at the chromosome's ends during the DNA replication? You think that over, we'll give you the answer after this play. I know, I know. Stay in the house. You need pass blocking. That's how you figure that out. <laughs> Second down and five. Gets loose again. He just kept pounding. He bounced one way, came back the other, and he's going to move the chains at the 27-yard line. Showing extraordinary maturity for a 19-year-old true freshman. Playing high school ball at this time last year. Making guys miss, always going forward, and hitting Miami where they've been susceptible right up the middle. And there goes McGahee to the clubhouse. Probably on his way to an x-ray machine. May even be on his way to a hospital. Hang in there, Willis. You'll be back. Terrific run play. On first down, go back to Claret. This is uh, Ross, Lydell Ross. And let's talk with Lynn Swan for a moment about Willis McGahee. Well, Keith, it's, it's fairly obvious that he has a fairly serious knee injury. Obviously, the medical staff here on the sideline for the Miami team will take him inside as you see him there walk, going on the car to the locker room. They will evaluate just to what extent that knee is hurt in the locker room, and I'm certainly they'll make sure he'll get an MRI. But there are all kinds of rumors swirling about McGehee. He said he was coming back next year. All kinds of rumors swirling around about contracts being offered by shoe companies to entice him to come out. That will not happen now. It's second down, 12. Krenzel lets it go down the middle. It's incomplete, and that's good. Uh, Barn Childress, uh, Bam Childress, was into trying to make the play over the middle, and uh, good coverage by Miami. Here's Michael Jenkins. He's going to clear things out and let Childress come down over the middle. But as you said, Keith, the coverage here by uh, Jennings, Kelly Jennings, is really exceptional as he breaks on the ball, gets it left hand 
to knock it away. They close well. They got so much speed, they'll close on you in almost any kind of play. And it's third down and 12. Correct. Benzel takes off. He's going to take some punishment here. He gets it down to the 25 yard line. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. And here comes Mike Nugent. Nugent has made a 44 yarder tonight. Place kicker 24, 25 out of 27 this season. His long has been 51 against Indiana. He's had his special year in his uh, sophomore year. This is a 42 yarder. Andy Groom holds it, and Kyle Andrews is the snapper. Boss kick! Missed it. Missed it. Wide right. And Bobby Bowden just shivered. <laughs> So we've got six minutes and 36 seconds to play in the football game, and we got another Buckeye breath holder. The attendance tonight, 77,502. It's the third largest Fiesta Bowl crowd. And they're watching what is clearly the best of all the BCS championship games so far. Down the middle, ball thrown to Kevin Winslow. He might break this big. His legs are taken away up at the 35-yard line. He picks up a first down. Chris Campbell kept him from a really big play. Jarrett Payton is in there at tailback in place of the injured Willis McGee. Yeah, Chrysler passing playbook. Two things to check out here. Watch Ken Dorsey. First is a quarterback drop back and come off to a secondary receiver who happens to be Kellen Winslow. This is Peyton slashing over the right side and going for at least five yards. And Winslow gets down across the middle. Eight catches now for 98 yards for Winslow as Miami's trying to change the tempo of this game with their no huddle offense, trying to wear out the Buckeye defense. Six minutes to go in the game. Ohio State leading by three. Just missed the 42-yard field goal. A little short pass drilled again to Kellen Winslow, and that will pick up the first down to the Ohio State 49-yard line. And right now, Ohio State has no answer for Winslow. He's running away from linebacker. He's overpowering defensive backs. Run it again with Peyton. Not a whole lot on this one as he ran into Kenny Peterson. 20. Well, Guys, I have to tell you, see Grant number six and getting ready for Winslow after he spent most of his time going against wide receivers because he wanted to get adjusted to the speed coming out of that position. Having a hard time with it. Ball is thrown out of bounds into the crowd incomplete. You can do that when you're outside the tackle. Yeah, there's a five yard limit there from the center on out, which goes actually beyond the tackle sometimes. In college football, it's five yards from the center each side. If the quarterback gets outside that five yards, he can throw the ball anywhere. This is resting at the 47 yard line where it is third down and eight. Dave Perry said, well, almost anywhere. <laughs> Shotgun, Dorsey, a lot of time, a lot of time, finally lets it go down the middle, it's caught by Roscoe Paris, and the ball comes out, and Ohio State pounces on it, the bin bag is down, and the Buckeyes recover it, it's Will Allen with another big play. Donnie, Nicky, and Dustin Fox combined to knock this ball out of the hands of Roscoe Parrish. Fantastic throw by Dorsey. Parrish just couldn't hang on as the Buckeyes secondary converges and knocks it away. And the Buckeyes may have dodged Doug Bullock. Go 
going down to the last five minutes at 17-14. Ohio State turnovers. Miami is helping them. Well, the five turnovers, obviously a season high, but Miami coming into the game only were plus two in turnover ratio. Surprising for a team that's undefeated. It's Torah. Finds a crack. Brought down by Maurice Sykes, who was shaken up a little while ago, but that is a gain from the 18 up to the 23, five yards. That looks like and a cramp for this calf. Coming up. Yeah. Yep. It looks like it could be a cramp, the way he's walking on it. Yeah. Holding it. Lydell Ross goes in to replace him, a 210-pound sophomore, and the fastest, as we told you earlier, of the group. So let's keep an eye on Florette and see what's going on here as they're looking around at the calf. It's not serious, but it still is painful. Oh, it hurts. <laughs> yeah. ah. It'll be second down and five from the 23 yard line for Ohio State. They need to hang on to the ball as long as they can. Prinzo gives it to Ross. And Ross is right about the line of scrimmage as William Joseph meets him. Time to check out our FedEx air stats. So Miami obviously with the advantage there as Krenzel has only completed five of 15, but Krenzel, as we look at our FedEx ground stats, is the leading rusher for Ohio State with 63 of their 107 yards. Now they figure to put it up. On third down and four with four wideouts. And 3.49 on the clock. Pressure coming. Krenzel steps away from it. Got a chance at the first down. He cut back into the middle of the field. If he'd have gone to the outside, I think he makes it. Here, I'm not sure. Well, you can't fault the effort, though, to lower his head one more time and try to pick up that first down. But I think you're right, Keith. I think he's a little bit shy, at least close enough to bring out the chains. Helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit with Maurice Sykes there. But Krenzel finding a way to fall forward and make this close. And he's a big guy. He's 225 pounds. He's not a gimme. He's going to be sore tomorrow. Oh, that's all right if he wins. And the next he day. He won't feel it. Oh, oh he got it. Oh. One of the more amusing things about it, he is from Utica, Michigan. <laughs> Not so amusing, Keith, is that uh, Miami has just two timeouts remaining. And Ohio State saw Krenzel make a similar play in their overtime win against Illinois earlier. It is first down at the 29-yard line for the Buckeyes. 3.25 to play in the game. Buckeyes lead by three points. Miami shuffling the defense. Handed off to Ross. Ross came around there, and he found a little room, picked up close to three yards, and a moment with Todd Harris. Well, Keith and Dan, it doesn't sound like much, but when you have calves as powerful as Lance Armstrong's, double tramps really hurt. A lot of flex all on those cramps. He's down here stretching them out, and as soon as he found out that Craig Kressel got that first down, he popped up to his feet. He's coming back in. All right. Timeout, three minutes and nine seconds to play in the ball game. Larry Coker, since he succeeded, Butch Davis at the University of Miami, 24 and 0. He doesn't know how to talk to a team that loses a game. Second down and seven. Maurice Claret, the single back for Ohio State. And it's coming at him hard. And they wrap his legs after a yard. It's DJ Williams in to make the play. Aerial coverage of tonight's game being provided by Prostitos. Brandon Joe, a fullback for the Buckeyes. A little slow getting up and now limping off the field. Ohio State is going with an unbalanced line right now, Keith. They're putting their tight end next to the guard on the weak side and bringing 
the other tackle over so that they have a lot more power on the right hand side of their formation. But losing Brandon Joe is a key ingredient to the power running game for the Buckeyes. How many times have you seen two fullbacks and one's named Brandon Joe and the other's named Brandon Smith? Never. That's right. Third down and six. Shotgun. Renzel. Deep coming. Steps away from it. Throws it. Oh! Almost picked off by the game. But not quite. Went through their hands, and Chris Gamble went for the shoe top and didn't quite come up with it. Oh, he came real close to making this catch, yes, Keith. He did. The pressure there, that's Walter with the dive. Prenzel gets away, throws a good ball, nice and low. Let's check out Gamble here working against Kelly Jennings. Oh, a little hold there, that should have been called. Oh, that is close to a completion. 26 was in his face. I think he probably had something to do with it. Taylor. And here's the punt. Andy Groom puts some air under it, drives it back to the 25-yard line. Here comes Roscoe Parrish. Parrish getting to the sidelines, gets a block. And he's finally taken down all the way down the field at the 26-yard line. Big return by Roscoe Parrish and a huge block by Gerald Weaver that kept him going. Weaver's one of the uh, stars of the special teams for Miami, and Trestle can't believe how things have changed so quickly. Miami is already in field goal range here, but they're thinking touchdown and another title. There's the block by Weaver just laying out Mike Kudla, and Roscoe Parrish having a great afternoon, great evening rather, sets up his team in great field position. 44 yards punt, but a 50 yard return, and Jared Payton is the single back. Another opportunity for Miami now in the closing minute, it's Payton bouncing into the middle and stop after maybe a yard. David Thompson on the hit. Time remaining is one minute and 50 seconds the clock is running miami with one timeout remaining and yes they play overtime in the championship game and it's a great overtime system where both teams will get the ball but we'll get into that a little bit later won't we yep. three wide outs on the left side Percy directing traffic Pressure, hit, down, 30-yard line, Simon Frazier. Sack back at the 30. Again, they're able to affect the timing of Ken Dorsey with the pass rush. It's not the first man that's going to get him, it's the second. Will Smith coming around the corner against Vernon Carey. That forces Dorsey up into the pocket where Simon Frazier jumps on his back. And down goes Frazier and Dorsey. <laughs> down goes Frazier. <laughs> 40 seconds to play. Miami with one timeout. Just to remind you, third down and very long. Dorsey gets it away. Underneath it goes to Jarrett Payton. And Payton, Payton struggles inside the 25 to the 23. And that's a brilliant play by Ken Dorsey, facing an umbrella defense with everybody playing deep, preventing the big play. He dumps it off to Peyton and sets up his field goal kicker from the 40-yard line. Todd Seavers in with an effort to try and tie this game. They came out hustling, and then Eric Winston, a true freshman, told him, hey, slow down. Take your time. They run it down to three seconds, so there's no time for anything but the field goal try. Now, does Ohio State try to freeze him? They've got two times up. Yeah, they got nothing to lose. Might as well use them. Make Todd Seavers think about this potential tying field goal. There you go. Yep. They call it. So well, that gives them a little more time to think. I remember a game, and I'm not sure that I can remember the fellow's name from uh, Oklahoma. They were playing Ohio State a long time ago, and uh, 
it was in this kind of a circumstance where uh, OU had a chance to win with a 43 yard field goal and the crowd is chanting block that kick and he's walking around out in the middle of the field conducting yeah. the crowd yeah. and he walked out and hit a 43 yarder and beat him. Yeah they're strange fellows those place kickers. <laughs> Seavers from 40 yards out. A lot of praying going on on both sidelines. Well, it makes you long for uh, that early on field goal, doesn't it? When they elected to try the trick play. And you see the winning streak, the most advertised stat in all of college football this last two weeks. So hold your breath. Here we go. We got one more timeout. Don't spend it. Both guys aren't hunkered down yet. Oh, that, is. that is that is great coaching. You get the kicker thinking, is this the time? <laughs> yes. Are they going to snap the ball? Am I going to be able to kick it? <laughs> and at the last instant, Wilhelm goes to the referee and sig signals timeout. <laughs> he's been there before. Youngstown State, Jim Tressel, 4-2. and two. Well, he's been there six times this season. <laughs> yes, he has. They have survived the falling wall so many times this season. You don't think anything really is going to upset them. Because I think they can, no matter who loses here, I think they walk off the field feeling pretty good about themselves. And the winner is going to be ecstatic. But it's quite a remarkable opportunity for Miami to drill a big hole in college football history for themselves. Has to be this time. Has to be. From 40 yards. Chris Harvey snaps. Caps our holes. But we're going to overtime. With all the flash bulbs popping in the stands, Todd Siever squeezes one inside the upright. Great snap, perfect hold by Freddie Capshaw. And Seavers didn't think it was in doubt, but that sure looked like it might have been. <laughs> no, it sure did. Oh, my goodness. That looked like it was good by a foot. So we'll be back for the overtime in a minute. We're going to have a coin flip. And uh, the rules of overtime are pretty well known now. But uh, first thing first, you've got to flip the coin. We go through the procedure. Focus, and right the two teams, and it's Maurice Claret holding court on the sideline right now. How about that punt return by Roscoe Parrish? 50 yards to Keith. set up Absolutely the receivers team. with that. Here are your rules. You have no sudden death. Each team gets an equal possession, the offense beginning on the opposition's 25-yard uh, line, and the process is repeated until the tie is broken. They start in the third overtime. You must go for two points if you're still tied and have to go to the third overtime. And it's almost universal that the team winning the toss will elect to play defense first. That way they know what they've got to do when they get the ball back. Here come your captains now, assembling to come to the center of the field. Ohio State looks like they're going to send out three. And uh, looks like Ken Dorsey, after cheering on a handful of nails, is going to come out and do it by himself. And uh, Buckeyes have not been terribly used to overtime games in their history. And this is the first time that we have had an overtime game in the bowl championship series. Miami doesn't have a whole lot of it. In fact, college football teams, generally speaking, don't have a whole lot of time in overtime games. But we had uh, one three-time three, three time overtime. Here's Randy Christie. All right. Ohio State won the toss and elected going defense. Miami selected going to this end. 
So the Hurricanes are going to be traveling from left to right. Here we go to overtime. 17-17 tie back early in the ball game in the first quarter. There was this. First time Ohio State threatened. They elected on fourth and one to go for a fake field goal with punter Andy Groom. He came up a half yard short and no points. You kind of figured this might be different because this is the first time ever two universities have had lady presidents, Dr. Donna E. Shalala from Miami and Dr. Karen A. Holbrook of Ohio State. Their teams are having at it. And this is Jarrett Pickney coming to the right side and stopped again. Will Smith is on on the play. Peyton obviously in the game replacing Willis McGahee who went out with a knee injury in that fourth quarter. Peyton is a solid back and of course his dad NFL legend Hall of Famer Walter Payton. Classmate of mine in the 1993 Hall of Fame class. And Jarrett introduced him as a first son. You get four snaps of the ball just like a regular game. You can make a first down and here's Dorsey throwing complete to Andre Johnson who has been very quiet in this ball game tonight. He makes that catch down around the 15 yard line. He's been double teamed a lot of the evening, Keith. That is why Winslow has been open over the middle. But Johnson, a threat, whether he has three receptions at this point or 30, especially in the red zone. He's got four for 54 yards now. Third down and one for the first down. They run it. And Peyton is knocked out of bounds at the eight-yard line, and that's the first down for Miami. So now they've got a first and goal from about the eight-yard line. Quatrine Hill, number 23, with the lead block there, as well as Eric Winston, the true freshman. I love Eric Winston's nickname, Keith. He's 6'7", 270, and his teammates have nicknamed him Neanderthal. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Ohio State. Ohio State. Ohio State. A touchdown in your by uh, electing to go to defense and giving up a touchdown. Pretty tough. Field goal, yeah, I might live with that. Now, I think Ohio State realizes that uh, Miami's putting together a pretty good couple of plays here. A lot of options for Miami to go to, especially first down now inside the 10 yard line. The first of the BCS championship series played right here as Tennessee won over Florida State. Florida State won the next year in the Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl, and Miami last year in the Rose Bowl. And they won handily in the Rose Bowl against Nebraska. But they've had to fight for their life tonight against these Ohio State Buckeyes. It looks like Miami wants to grind things out. Both tight ends are in the game. And only one wide receiver. Of course, that one wide receiver is pretty good, Andre Johnson. And he's isolated on Fox up here. And they give it to Pickney. And he fights his way down to inside the seven, maybe, before Matt Wilhelm wraps his big old arms around him. You know who's holding his breath right now? A man Besides. named Cooper. Who recruited a lot of these Ohio State Buckeyes that are down there on that field. Yeah, 18 of the 22 starters. Uh, John Cooper. John Cooper's fingerprints all over. Yep. Hi, John. There's a few other people holding their breath, too. <laughs> well, yes, sir, <several> million. <laughs> but Cooper is directly involved. It's a multiple choice question. <laughs> Ball is at the seven. We're at second down and goal. Dorsey throws to the end zone. Touchdown. 
Kellen Winslow making the catch. There's a penalty flag, I thought, thrown by the back judge at the back of the end zone, but he's talking to the referee now. If anything, it would probably be holding. Pass interference against Ohio State. Winslow catch is good. Yeah, he picked, it, the picked it right off the top of Will Allen's helmet, too. Great athletic move. The Buckeyes came with pressure. Dorsey hung tough in the pocket, and Winslow with a remarkable catch. Severs for the point. And he makes it. Again, if you bring pressure on Ken Dorsey, you better get to him because he's tall enough to see over the top. He's experienced enough to know where he wants to go with the ball. Wilhelm and Nicky come up the middle. They're picked up. It's a jump ball for Winslow, and Winslow's going to win every time. And that is Miami's first lead in the ball game since they led 7-0 way back in the first quarter. Allen had his back to Winslow the whole way. That allowed Dorsey to just put the ball up in the air and let his talented tight end take over. Well, the boys who cast their MVP ballots early <laughs> may be calling for a second go-round. I think that might be the confetti, those first-round ballots. <laughs> Ten catches for Winslow, 115, and that touchdown. Now the Buckeyes will go to work from the 25-yard line. They're down by seven. Krenzel back throwing, steps away from the pressure, takes off with it, going to run with it, and run it for five yards before D.J. Williams brings him down. Now the one guy that Miami's got to make sure they keep an eye on is Michael Jenkins. He's the guy that Krenzel is looking for in crunch time. Miami's done a great job on him. Only got two catches, but again, Krenzel only completed five passes all night. Dorsey taking charge on the sidelines. Great scene. Go to the shotgun. Penalty flag stops it. No play on it. You know, Normally Jerome, that means false start. Yeah, McDougal started, and then Hartsock came out of his stance. False start on the offense. Second down. Well, they go back to the 25 with that five-yard penalty. Watch McDougal right here. Here's Hartsock. Well, he's not listening to his quarterback. He's watching his enemy. <laughs> Trying to protect that inside gap. Yep. So it's second down and 10 from the 25. Blitz coming, pressure got him. Back at the 29 yard line, it was Jamal Green. He's the leading sacker for the Hurricanes, and he comes up with his first tonight at the best time possible for the defending champs. First sack of the ball game for Miami. He ran around Rob Sims. Again, another true freshman for Ohio State. How big is that penalty now? Big. Third down. And 14 back on the 29. Miami scored a touchdown in their first possession of overtime. Winslow's pass is thrown short to the ground. That was uh, McDougal. Force that. Tough to throw a screen pass against this Miami defense. Their speed of their front four uh, really gets on the quarterback in a hurry, and then. The linebacker speed and then the secondary, they can close on Florette as they did that time. Well, it's fourth down and 14. It's the last chance to stay alive in the overtime. If you've got something up your sleeve, this might be the time to pull it out, huh? They go with three wide outs. We've got two protectors back there for Prenzel. Now one of them runs away. Florette, Prenzel steps up and goes to the sidelines, and that's good for a first down. Caught by Michael Jenkins. Well, 
Well, they've done it before. It's nothing new to Buckeye fans. Krenzel and Jenkins. <laughs> Fourth and 14. Are, are you kidding me? Great pass protection for Krenzel. Great read by the receiver. And the quarterback is Glenn Sharp. Number 31 is totally turned around here. Watch Jenkins, though, when he looks down. Where are my feet? Because he got burned a little while ago when he wasn't aware of a catch on the sidelines that he had a foot on the truck. So it's first down for the Buckeyes. Just outside the 12, Krenzel steps in the middle, throws to the end zone. No! Intended again for Jenkins, covered by Taylor. Again, it's that matchup that Miami wants. Sean Taylor, who's normally a safety, but has cornerback skills, will come over from his safety spot here, take Jenkins man for man, and prevent Krenzel from having a good angle to squeeze this one in. No place for Krenzel to throw it because 26, Taylor, had the inside. Jenkins is not out there. Then I would be looking for Chris Gamble over the middle. He came off the field. Here goes uh, Krenzo. He's at the five-yard line, and he is hammered. He took a wicked shot to the head, and he went down hard on his back. Taylor and Vilma hit him, that's, and he gets up. Keith, that's two huge hits by Vilma. 51 right in the middle of the screen. Watch him send Krenzo backwards. Whoa. How does Krenzel get up from these shots? These two guys drilling it. Two big guys. Taylor, Vilma. It's third and three from the five-yard line for Ohio State. Third and three. They must score a touchdown to stay alive in the overtime. Krenzel sees a little hole. Now he slides out. Now he throws. And it's incomplete. Taylor knocked it away from Hartsuck. Taylor's having an unbelievable night tonight. He's got two interceptions, 11 tackles. He was victimized by Maurice Claret, who picked his pocket after one of his interceptions. But you can just see how smart he is as a safety, reading the quarterback and then breaking on the ball. Miami has called this time out. It is another fourth down for Ohio State. Fourth down and three for a first down. Fourth down and five for a touchdown. I thought for a moment that Krenzel had a little hole to squeeze through if he had cut left. But then I saw Vilma step into it, and so did he, and he went the other way. <laughs> What's that thing about valor? Yeah. <laughs> it's always tomorrow, next season. Well. The good news for Ohio State is, is this big guy right here, it's Michael Jenkins. He looks like he's going to go back in the lineup. We got one on one. Put that bitch right on you. Okay. No thinking about it. You want to slant. So Jenkins is going to run a slant, and uh, Krenzel talking to his tight end, Ben Hartsock. If you have man on man coverage, look for the ball. First look will be to Jenkins on the slant route. But Hartsock could come up big here tonight. Well, he did once this season in one of those uh, knuckle busters they had. He stepped up and, and made the catch and won the game. Had a TV catch against Cincinnati and one against Wisconsin, but none tonight. There's Jay, there is uh, Hartsock right there. Lorette's up there as a, as a wide out, too. The ball goes into the end zone, and it is incomplete. Intended for Gamble. Now there is a penalty flag thrown. Hold on. Hold the phone. Everybody comes running down on the field. you got to get off because there's a penalty flag thrown, and I think it's against Miami. And if it's thrown in the end zone, the ball will be placed on the one-yard line. First and goal. Glenn Sharp. Trying to cover Chris Gamble, and he may have arrived a tad too soon. Randy Crystal. Yep. Glenn Sharp, 31 on Chris Gamble, number seven. Oh, that's a tough call there. What about this angle? 
Bad call. Bad call. The left hand. I don't know if the left arm was there too soon or not. I think the ball got there before Glenn Sharp did. Well, he waved it incomplete and then threw the flag. Boy, Gamble had a chance to make the catch before contact was made by Sharp. The only thing is they may have called the contact that was earlier, but the ball had not been released by the quarterback. This is a bad call for the Miami Hurricanes. Now, they could have been holding there. They called pass interference, Keith. Yeah, I did. And this man right here says incomplete. Mm. So it is first and goal for Ohio State. They'll try to run it. And they're having a little problem with that early on. They get back to the line of scrimmage. Claret carrying it. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, when Miami thought they had won, Sean Taylor, number 26 of safety, had thrown his helmet up in the air and all the pieces came apart. He missed that last play because he was on the sideline trying to find the pieces, get it put it back together. They got it put back together. Now he's back in the on the field. You wouldn't want to be out there trying to defend here without him in the mix. With all your padding and your helmet too. Boy, we beat him. Found it in the middle. Yeah. It's short. Well, you'd like to see Claret get airborne down there. Yeah. Trying to go up over the top. He decided to go low and came up short. Jim Trestle's 49 years old and just to really his second year at Ohio State. I don't know how many seasons like this you can go through, Jim. The legions will be diminished. Trenzo sneaking touchdown. <laughs> oh, a kick to the target. And we'll go around again. And Keith at center was a true freshman, Nick Mangold, who led the way along with Bryce Bishop and Shane Olivier over that right side. Good patience by Krenzel to find a crack and get in for the score. Nugent for the point. I don't need to tell you anything about this. Just watch it. Down in the middle. Heads up play. Keith, Sean Taylor rushed the center, fake like he was coming, and that caused a false start by Ohio State. And that'll back him up five. Turn the snap. False start. The offense. And the five yards get him to repeat the try. What a heads-up play by Sean Taylor. What a player he is as a safety. 26 right here. Watch him shake up the center. That's Kyle Andrews as a snapper, number 60. And he gets the left guard to jump. Well, they'll try it again. Nugent has missed one extra point this season. From the 15-yard line. On its way. Good. <laughs> 77,502 in the attendance, and ain't nobody going home. You having fun yet, big boy? Wear it out. <laughs> we continue. It is now 24-24, and we've got another overtime coming up. Ohio State will have the first possession. 24-24, second overtime. And this is Lydell Ross going to the sidelines of the Hurricanes. One of the rounds, but it's a pretty good pickup on first down, like about nine yards. Ross showing off his uh, outstanding speed. Paid for it, too, as a tough tackle there by D.J. Williams. But Ross picking up nine yards. He's coming out now. Kind of holding the right shoulder, looks like. Hemby, freshman tight end, goes in for Ohio State. Single back is Claret. Penzo gives it to him. He's looking for some daylight, and I tell you, there's some 
quick Miami people had got there that time. That was Roger McIntosh. Just locked his legs. We both saw the same thing, Keith. A hole on that left side. Claret saw it too. He can't believe how quickly McIntosh closed. Starting here and then coming back, watch McIntosh number 50. Just keep Claret at the line of scrimmage. It's third down and one. Claret's carried 22 times tonight for 42 yards. Ooh. Not quite two yards per carry. Yeah. Let's see here. Can you get it this time? Well, Crimson will do it himself. And he just jumps right on the uh, hip pocket of the center. And Bryce Bishop and he rides along with him and has the first down at the 11-yard line. Alex Stepanovich back in at center for Krenzel, who has now rushed 19 times for 80 yards. Well, you know, Stepanovich is, uh, he's a wide body. He's six foot four, 310 pounds from Berea, Ohio. He's a junior. They're all juniors all the way across that offensive front for the Buckeyes. They're coming back. First down at the 11. Frenzel wants to pass, now does, and has it completed. Down to the five-yard line to Michael Jenkins. Maurice Sykes defending. We got the Buckeye offensive line. All those juniors you're talking about, Keith, are doing a pretty good job now of keeping Frenzel upright. He's got time to find Jenkins on the crossing route, and then a really a sure tackle by Maurice Sykes keeps Jenkins from getting in the end zone. Taylor was there, but he looks a little tender, doesn't he? Half, half step slow. Yep. Second down from the five. Correct. Touchdown! Now, Maurice Sykes couldn't do it two plays in a row. He had Claret right at the line of scrimmage and could not make the tackle as Claret sidestepped him and accelerated through a huge hole and into the end zone. Here's your extra point try now for Mike Nugent. Oh, that snap was low and hard, but the kick is good. Handled well by Andy Groom. Check out the touchdown by Maurice Claret. Sometimes you gotta make the first guy miss. Well, the first guy is gonna be number 36, Maurice Sykes. Fine job by Clark. There's the broken tackle. There's the touchdown for Ohio State. The down block is excellent by Ryan Hamby. And then Claret staying low keeping those legs driving, getting the six points. And he's carried about 227 pounds, 28 pounds, and he goes in there swimming away. And he is a tough trip. It is now first down for Miami, as Ohio State leads 31-24. And it goes to Jared Payton, and Payton has trouble getting back to the line of scrimmage and does not. Remember, the Hurricanes are without Willis McGay. He suffered an injured knee. And Keith, uh, Miami, curiously, had two tight ends in the game there. Thought that they could maybe pound the ball a little bit. Now they take out Eric Winston and bring in Roscoe Parrish. Second down and 11. Ohio State has the lead in this second overtime by seven. Dorsey's pass incomplete. He was pressured. He was trying to get the ball to Kellen Winslow. And Dorsey may be hurt, Keith. He took a hard hit, and he's having a little trouble getting to his feet, but he's trying, and he can't do it. He can't do it. That brings on Derek Crudup. He's the backup quarterback. Middle linebacker Matt Wilhelm. That's a quarterback's worst nightmare. You take the shot from the player himself, and then he drives you all the way to the ground under 245 pounds. That could be any number of things, from a collarbone to a rib injury. 
to his shoulder. So not only is McGahee out of the game, now Dorsey's going to have to go out on this third down and 10. He looks like he was just had his bell rung. Maybe he had the wind knocked out of him. He's got to go out of the ball game, though, whether he's injured or not. And he is totally deflated, if nothing else. Yeah, the big thing will be, can he raise that right arm and can yep. he throw the ball? Bigger thing is Derek Crudup now will come into the ball game with very little experience. Sophomore from Deerfield Beach, Florida. Played some last year in the backup role, but he's never been in a bigger moment than he's entering right now. But the key is, what about Dorsey? If Crudup can do something on third down and 10 to get him a first down. With only two plays left for Miami unless they get a first down. And Crudup back and throws, and throws the ball is caught by Hill, the fullback. And Quadrant Hill moves it down for a good eight yards before he was belted out. Maybe, Keith, uh, maybe seven yards. That's a remarkable play. Hill has not touched the ball yet tonight. Crudup comes in, five-step drop, fires the ball out there. Great play by Crudup and Quadreen Hill as Ohio State now is going to call time. Or and rather, Miami's going Miami. to call time, yeah. And it's Dorsey walking around over there. He's got his win back. And apparently he's convinced he's all right to play, and he's talking to the coaches, talking to the doctors. And apparently the medical folks have said, okay, go ahead. Boy, what a job by Derek Crudup to come in the game totally cold and find a receiver out of the backfield and Quadrine Hill making the catch now. Comes down to one play, you're gonna have your horse back in there at quarterback. And a lot of weapons for Ken Dorsey to look at. Primarily, Kellen Winslow over the middle has been very big for Miami. All night long, Winslow with 10 catches, 115 yards. And a touchdown. Well, they're looking at fourth down and three. And apparently Dorsey is going to come back in, which to me seems a considered risk. Because how do you know? Dorsey is such a gamer, such a competitor. You'd have to drag him kicking and screaming out of there. But uh, you've got to make sure he's sound. Here he comes. They need three yards. And Ohio State taking a look at what Miami presented as far as personnel is concerned, they decide to call a timeout and make further adjustments. And that helps Dorsey. Yeah, it gets his head clearer and clearer. Yep. Still would like to see him toss the ball a little bit, but obviously there's nothing wrong with his arm. 34 game win streak on the line. Dorsey's career 38 and 1 coming into this ball game. Larry Coker succeeded Butch Davis at Miami last year. He's never lost as a head coach. Doesn't know how to make a loser speech. And he, I don't think, is terribly interested in learning. We're in overtime, the second overtime. Ohio State scored. Claret banged it in from five. 31-24 the score. Miami has fourth down and three to get a first down and stay alive. It's not really a question of scoring right now. What you want is three yards. Three measly yards, and they're going to come with three receivers to the wide side of the field as Winslow is at the tight end spot right here. I would say he would be the man. Dorsey's pass, good. They've got the first down. Down at the 10 yard line, it was Winslow, and there's a penalty flag. A late, the phone. late flag after the play, Keith. Winslow was down. On the play, a game of seven. Face mask, five yard penalty. That puts him on the five-yard line. I think Dustin Fox is the guilty player for Ohio State. But Winslow so quick out of the break. Gets his head around. Ball is thrown perfectly right to the numbers. 
and watch Fox come up. And just that right there. Boy, that looks like more than just a five-yard penalty. They put the ball down on the six. Right on the six. And it's first and goal for Miami. Dorsey throwing. In zone, no. Penalty flag. A little bit late coming. Hey, he was digging in that back pocket. Couldn't get it out the first time, but Chris Gamble That's has the, the pass interference on Andre Johnson. Yeah, but Chris Gamble benefited by that same flag from the same officials down the other end of the field and the other over. Oh, didn't he ever? <laughs> He's just going to reach out and grab Johnson. Look at the power of Johnson to swim to the inside. Gamble was trying to take the inside away by his alignment. And Johnson just too powerful. Now they put the ball at the two-yard line. Johnson has only one catch in the second half and in these overtimes. First and goal from the two. It's Peyton to the one. Walter Sun, Jarrett, 6'2", 218, Junior, Harlington Heights, Illinois. There have been 187 plays on the field between the two teams tonight. And Gamble, Ohio State has 118 plays. He has been involved in 118 plays tonight. Wow. Dorsey throwing, tight in, missed him. Had him. Eric Winston, uh, the freshman tied in, had gone in there in the double tied in alignment, broken clean and clear, and Dorsey missed him. There may be something wrong with Ken Dorsey's arm. After he threw it, he just let it hang by his side. You don't miss a guy this wide open by this much if you're Ken Dorsey. Check out his reaction after the throw. Sure, he's disappointed that he missed his tight end, but I think that shoulder's giving him problems. Third and goal from the one. And it off to the fullback, Hill. And Matt Wilhelm stops him. Trying a little quick hitter there, not giving the ball to your tailback, trying to give it to Quadrine Hill, his first rush of the night, behind the tight end coming in motion, Winston, and Ohio State again, that front four, along with Wilhelm, just stuffed them. Well, the ball is actually a little short of the one-yard line now. It is fourth down, the final play, unless they can stick it in the end zone. Andre Johnson, Roscoe Parrish, and Kellen Winslow, and Dorsey under pressure. Throws it! Incomplete! The Buckeyes win! C. Grant was the man who pressured Dorsey, and now the party begins for the Ohio State Buckeyes. They are 14 and 0. And they are the national champions of college football. And they did it their way, Keith, with defense. Right down to the very last play. Brilliant call by Mark D'Antonio bringing the corner blitz rather than linebacker off the corner and see Grant forcing Dorsey to put up a prayer. The tough guy of the night, Prinzel. Craig Prinzel, quarterback, Ohio State. Threw the, ball, he played. threw the ball 21 times, only completed seven. He ran the ball 19 times for 81 yards, and he scored twice. And he's got a billion bruises to show for it. It was the tackle of Wilhelm on Dorsey that may well have been the big play defensively for Ohio State. Because Ken Dorsey is less than whole right now. a tremendous blow drove him into the ground he went out of play as he has to under the rules came back and didn't quite see himself C. Grant is number six totally unblocked grabs Dorsey and throws him to the ground and Donnie Nicky's there to make sure that no hurricane comes up with his catch 
tough as he is, Dorsey couldn't pull it out. And so the Miami win string of 34 consecutive stops. And Larry Coker, as the head coach of the Hurricanes, has just suffered his first loss. Jim Trestle, 18 years at Youngstown State, 15 as the head coach, four 1AA championships. Keith, our built Ford tough play of the game, is on fourth and 14. Craig Krenzel, as he's done all year long in the first overtime, converts, steps up into the pocket, finds Michael Jenkins, first down Buckeyes. That's our Ford tough play of the game. So the celebration is on for the Buckeyes. So the Ohio State Buckeyes have won their fifth national championship, their first since 1968, a 14-0 season marked by one breathtaking finish after another as the night was the same thing. Defense, 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 and finally Claret goes in for the winning touchdown in the second overtime, and 31-24 uh, is your final score. So rest easy, Woody. The new man has arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to present a little bit of hardware here on the floor. For the Ohio State Buckeyes. I have with me up here the Tostitos Fiesta Ball Chairman Steve Harrell and Al Brew, Frito Lay North American President and CEO. And Steve, go ahead. On behalf of our 3,000 volunteers, and the families from Frito-Lay and Tostitos, we'd like to present the Tostitos Fiesta Ball Championship Trophy to Coach Jim Tressel and the Ohio State Buckeyes. <laughs> Coach, I'm gonna ask you to just slide a little bit to my right. Stand right here. You don't want to go too far away from this little piece of crystal. And now to present this sought after football on the pedestal, the Circuit City Bowl Championship Series Trophy, Alan McCullough, Chairman and CEO of Circuit City. Alan, you got lost back there. Step right up, Alan. Thanks. Hey, don't tell, man. On behalf of all the men and women of Circuit City, and the American Football Coaches Association. It's my great pleasure to present the Circuit City National Championship Trophy to you, Coach, to your team, and to what appears to be all of Ohio. Congratulations on an extraordinary game and a perfect season. All is yours. I know you trust this football team, but you want to be extra careful with that piece of glass. Congratulations on a tremendous victory, and you did it your way. Hard fought in the trenches. I tell you what, we are so proud of these young men. These 13 seniors. We've always had the best damn band in the land. Now we got the best damn team in the land. I want to bring in Michael Dolph. Michael, come on over here. You know, on the college landscape, there are a lot of players who look at those big dollar signs and decide they wanted to leave college. 
You stayed at The Ohio State University for just this very moment. Yeah. I believed in our team 12 months ago when I made the decision to come back. We had great fans, we had a great support, we had a great senior class. And my one goal it was to win a national championship. I won a champion. I won a championship on every level since I was eight years old. And to come back and to get it done, I give all glory to God and I thank the best the best damn fans in the land. <laughs> okay. We go from the senior to a first finish. Maurice Claret? Is Maurice up here on the it feels like everybody's up here. All right, he's not here. Well, I want Cringel. Where's the Cringel? He was here a minute ago. Here you go. Craig, congratulations. That was the guttiest performance when the running game wasn't working quite so well, when you couldn't get the ball down the field. You took the game in your own hands and on your own legs. Made some tough yards for your team. You know, that's the way it's been all year for us. We, uh, we have 10 other players on the field giving, giving outstanding effort every play. And, uh, you know, sometimes certain things aren't working and we got to go to others. And, you know, it's no different than what we've done all year. We, we made plays in the close games when we had to. Congratulations to you. A great effort by the Buckeyes. A great team effort. <laughs> Maurice, a, a good job running the football tonight, but maybe the play of the game wasn't a run carrying the football, but going after the Miami player and stripping him of the football after he got the interception. Tell us what was going through your mind. I just like to thank Coach Spence, because Coach Spence always talking about when somebody has the ball and you uh, got to turn into a defender, always trying to strip the ball. And uh, I just listened to Coach Spence and came through. Tremendous job. Well, that will go down as probably one of the great plays in bowl history. Championship Series on ABC Sports. Championship Television.